Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm your average infantryman and Iraq war veteran, Chris Cappy, and I'm here speaking with Dijon, who's a sniper fighting for the Russian army. He's on the front lines in Ukraine right now. A lot of people... Uh, my email, uh, if you don't mind, just to interpret that. My name is Chris, and I'm an obvious warrior who is fighting in Iraq, and today as a guest in Dejana, who is a sniper and who is fighting in Ukraine. A lot of people uh, might be confused as to why I would want to give someone fighting for Russia an opportunity to speak. And I wholeheartedly disagree with their invasion of Ukraine. Mnogi ljudi se možda i ne slažu sa time zbog čega sam ja pozvao čovjeka koji se bori sa ruske strane. Koliko god da ja ne vjerujem da je Rusija u pravu što je ušla u Ukrajinu, ja ipak želim da porazgovaram sa ljudima sa druge strane. The answer is because when I deployed to Iraq, I wish I could have had the opportunity to speak with the opposing side. I wish I could have understood their point of view as they would describe it. Razum zato je veoma jednostavan. Ja bi više voleo zaista da sam ja imao mogućnost da razgovaram sa Iračanima dok sam ja bio na zadatku u Iraku. It would not have changed my mind, but it would have let me possibly let go of some of the anger that I carried with me for years after I came home from the war. Ne vjerujem da bi to nešto značajno promijenilo, ali vjerujem da bi ljutnja koja je u meni buktala bila puno manja, koju sam ja priživljavao kada sam se vratio iz Rata. I believe understanding the opposing side is one way to aspire towards peace in the future. Ja mislim ako ustemo da razumemo drugu stranu da je to jedan od načina kako da dođemo do mire. So... At this point, I'd like to get into the interview, unless Dijon wants to say something in response uh, quickly to that. Otherwise, we could start the interview. Možemo ili da počnemo interview, ili ako Dejan hoće da kaže nekoliko uvodnih reči, pa da onda krenemo na interview. Ako bi mogli da predstave i ovog drugog momka koji je sa mnom. It will be highly appreciated if you can uh, introduce uh, your uh, uh, fellow man. Yes, this is Andrew Tucker. He's our associate producer at Task and Purpose. He's a combat Iraq uh, combat veteran of the war in Afghanistan. Uh, moj kolega je također uh, je, produ je producent ovoga kanala. On je također učestvovao uh, u ratu uh, u Iraku. Afganistan. Uh, yeah, and Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan, sorry. Uh, my bad. I Afganistan takođe. Uh, pa, šta bi vam ja rekao za početak, mi smo već pričali pre neki dan, naši stavovi su apsolutno suprotni, međutim, to nije razlog da ne pričamo. Mi nismo veliki političari, mi nismo neki visoki generali. Um, političari i generali se sigurno neće sresti na bojnom polju, a mi hoćemo. I ja mislim da priča može uvek da donese nešto dobro. Uh, the matter is, we already had a discussion a few days ago, and we agree that we totally disagree. Nevertheless, uh, we are not generals, we are not politicians, so therefore our role could be just to try to understand each side or each other much better, and I do believe that uh, this is the only way to create bridges among us. I agree. And with that, I think we could start with the, the questions. What is your name? What is your name, age, rank, and unit? Znači, Chris je rekao da ja sam u Ruskoj armiji, ja nisam u Ruskoj armiji, ja sam kapetan armije Donjetske republike i sa 2014. godine ratujem tamo, služio sam u nekoliko jedinica, bio sam u ličnom uzbezbedjenju Aleksandra Zaharčenka, snajper i zviđač. My name is Dejan Beric, my rank is captain and I am part of Donetsk People Republic Army. 
Uh, I do believe that Chris uh, just misinterpreted that I am part of the Russian army. I am not. I am part of the Donetsk People's Republic uh, Army. Uh, I served in several different units. At uh, one point, I was even a personal bodyguard for the president of Donetsk uh, Republic, Mr. Zakharchenko. Da ću konačno i ja postati vojnik ruske armije, jer će zajedno sa republikama i naša armija da se prisjedini ruskoj armiji. Then again, Chris might be right, that, uh, due to the fact that after the referendum that already took place in our republic, I do believe that soon we will become part of the Russia, and therefore I will become a part of the Russian army, uh, as I dreamed about. For so many, uh, for so long time. Would you also get Russian citizenship at that point? I already have a Russian citizenship. I do have my own house in Russia. And to be quite honest with you, I do have a small farm that I am handling uh, as a private person. Can you tell me where were you born originally? I was born in a place near to Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. At that time, it was the capital of Yugoslavia. I živeo sam u selu koje se zove, koje se zove Putinci. And I lived in a place, and I lived in a place called Putinci, next to Belgrade. Walk me through, how did you get introduced to the military? Did you have family members in the Serbian uh, forces? How did you first get introduced to the armed forces? Dali možeš da mi objasniš tvoj vojnički put? Da li je možda neko iz tvoje familije bio vojnik, odnosno oficir, i kako si ti uopšte stao oficirom? Mojih oba dva deda su učestvovali drugom svjetskom ratu, borili su se protiv fašista i oni su me vaspitavali. Ja sam oficirom stao u Donjetu publici. The fact of the matter is, both of my grandparents, they fought in the Second World War. They fought a fight against Nazi, German Nazi. And to be quite honest, I become an officer in Donetsk People's Republic. In uh, uh, Yugoslavia and in Serbia, I was ordinary soldier. In Yugoslavia, I was an ordinary soldier. I was in the war in 1999 against NATO. I was involved in the civil war, which broke up in former Yugoslavia, and also I participated in a uh, uh, war uh, with NATO in 1999. All in all, I am in a war for pretty much uh, 15 years so far. So can you explain so, for people who don't know, who were the two sides in the Kosovo war? When did that happen? Can you give me a little bit of background about that? Za ljude koji to ne znaju, da li možeš da nam objasniš koje su dve strane koje su bile u Sukobu na Kosovu? I šta se zaista tamo desilo? Pre početka rata na Kosovu, amerikanci su tražili od Miloševića da kupe jedan deo Kosova gde bi izgradili bazu Bonstil. Milošević je odkazao od Kosova i tim je počeo. Ok, before the war, before the war broke out in former Serbia, on the Kosovo, to be quite precise, uh, United States of America uh, did demand to get a plot of the lands to uh, build an army base. Uh, currently, they do have that, uh, and the name is Bonstil. 
Yeah. During but, carry on. During the war, you moment, you fought. Moment. What was Russia's involvement? Did you fight alongside Russians? I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, there was a problem with my interpretation because I uh, stepped into his sentence. I didn't want to misinterpret anything or to forget anything. So therefore, please do allow him to finish his sentence. Sure. Two years before the start of the war, Albanian army was in Kosovo was in the list of terrorist organizations in the United States of America. Uh, two years before the war break out in Kosovo and Metohia, uh, you have to understand that K KLA or Kosovo Liberation Army was on the list as a terrorist organization, even in the United States of America. When you were in this war in Kosovo, what was Russia's involvement? Za vreme tvog rata na Kosovu, koje je bilo učešće Rusije? Da li oni su imali bilo kakvu ulogu tamo? Bili su to ruski dobrovoljci. To the best of my knowledge, only Russian volunteers came to fight along us. Verovatno je bilo i nekih pripadnika određenih službi, kao u svakom ratu, nema rata gde nema pripadnika službi, ali ja lično ih nisam video. Ja sam učestvo u ratu, to je već. Maybe, maybe there was uh, uh, other uh, people who were there. Maybe they represented some uh, uh, government uh, organization of the Russia, but not to my knowledge. I cannot vouch for any of it due to the fact that I was a soldier and I was in my trenches. You became close with these Russian volunteers. Dali si se upoznao i dali si bio dobar sa tim ruskim dobrovoljcima? i na Kosovu i u Bosni i u Hrvatskoj gdje su bio. Yes, I was uh, quite close to them uh, and they were clo quite close to me and we fight together in Bosnia and Herzegovina in Croatia and on Kosovo and Metohija as well. You stayed in touch with them. Tako da znači ti si s njima u kontaktu bio celo to vreme. Yes. So the story that we hear in the West is that the NATO bombings helped end the war, helped bring peace in Kosovo. What are your thoughts on that? Priča koju mi imamo ovdje na zapadu je da je NATO bombardovanje donelo mir na Kosovu i Metohiji. A koje je tvoje mišljenje o svemu tome? Znači, za vreme Jugoslavije, kosovski albanci su, ako su, na primer, Srbi, morali da upišu fakultet i da imaju 100 bodova da bi upisali fakultet, albanci su to mogli da urade sa 60 bodova. Well, let me just give you some examples how was the situation in Jugoslavia. For example, if an ordinary Serb would like to get involved in university, they had to have approximately 100 points, uh, which will be measured uh, on his own exams. Uh, in yes. contrast, the Albanians uh, could uh, get enrolled with 60 points only because they were minorities. Sve su imali besplatno, besplatnu školu, besplatno zdravstvo, sve. Uh, they had pretty much everything for free, such as free education, free uh, medical uh, support, uh, pretty much everything was for free. Šta je predstavljalo problem na Kosovu? Znači, albanska armija je ubijala policajce po ulicama, postavljala bombe u škole, postavljala bombe na policajske učaske. Sve to što vi u Americi nazivate teroristi, to je radila, Alban, albanci su radili na Kosovu. Uh, so, uh, so-called Kosovo Liberation Army started to attack the police, uh, policemen and to kill them on the, on the street, on the crossing roads. Uh, they start to plant the bombs in the school. Uh, pretty much what you will in the United States describe as terrorists, they had that modus operandi. So they try to create as much chaos as possible. Trgovlje organima na Kosovo je bilo 
veoma zastupljeno zajedno sa Turskom i Ujedinjim Arabskim Emiratima. Na Kosovu su nestajali srpske žene, uglavnom žene i deca i sa njihovim organima je trgovao i sadašnji predsednik Kosova. I u to vreme i za vreme. And I also need to point out that so-called Kosovo Liberation Army was heavily involved in uh, uh, traffic, trafficking of internal organs. You have to understand there was uh, numerous civilians that disappeared on Kosovo and Metohija. Predominantly that was uh, children and females. And we do know that they trade, uh, that they trade with those internal organs on the open market in Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Uh, yeah. One of the instigators of those trading was a current uh, president of Kosovo and uh, Kosovo and Metropia. I u Međunarodnom sudu u Hagu su svoje svi ti dokazi izneti. Znači, Srbija je morala da uradi isto to što bi uradila svaka, svaki štat u Americi, znači morala da se bori protiv terorista. Uh, all those um, evidence were presented in international tribunal in Hague, and you have to understand that Serbia, as a sovereign country, had to do whatever it necessary in order to defend law and order on their uh, territory. And what impact did the NATO bombing Bombing the NATO bombings in Kosovo have on you and your perspective towards NATO. Uh, bombardovanje NATO. Kako je ono imalo utjecaj na tebe i na tvoj na tvoj pogled na NATO kao organizaciju? NATO kao organizacija je za mene i pre toga bila teroristička organizacija. Ako pogledate istoriju na uh, Važni ljudi u NATO su bili oficiri koji su u Hitlerovoj Nemačkoj služili u SS divizijama. To su oficijalni podaci koje možete da vidite bilo gde na internetu. Even before that unfortunate war on Kosovo and Metohija, I thought of NATO as a terrorist organization due to the fact that lots of SS officers from the Nazi Germany was uh, heavily involved in creation of NATO structures and they were in charge of uh, some certain NATO units. Um, so therefore, uh, my opinion in regards to NATO did not change whatsoever. I oni su bombardovanjem tada, znači NATO je prekršio svoj ustav, prekršio je ustav Ujedinjenih nacija, prekršio je sve moguće pravne norme kada je bombardovao Srbiju 1999. godine. And therefore uh, it was just a proof of my belief in 1999 when the NATO uh, disregard their own constitution, the constitution of the United Nations, they did not abide to any uh, uh, United Nations charters or even to a NATO charters themselves uh, that they created themselves. So uh, uh, ever since that bombardment, I have just a stronger feeling that NATO is a terrorist organization. What was life like for you after the war in Kosovo ended? Kako je tvoj život bio posle rata na Kosovo? Okod mene se ništa posebno nije promenilo. Ja sam, mi smo znali da će da počne rat na Kosovu i četiri dana pre početka bombardovanja, pošto se ja služio u specijalnoj jedinici 72. brigadi u Jugoslaviji, pre, znači četiri dana pre početka rata otišao sam kao dobrovoljac. Posle rata, Dejan, posle rata. Pre rata, četiri dana pre početka rata otišao sam kao dobrovoljac. Okay. Well, uh, he would just like to point out that he was a member of the special forces uh, called 72nd uh, Brigade, and he went to war four days before the NATO started to bombard Serbia. Posle rata, rat se završio, ja se vratio u kući i dalje sam nastavio da radim civilni posao koji sam radio u jednom. And soon as the war ended, I went back to my home and I continued to do my usual uh, civilian work.
I jedino što sam bio ljut, bio sam ljut kao i svi moji drugari, moji sasluživci, moji no, drugari s kojima sam bio u ratu, zato što nas je Milošević izdao jer je krenuo da pregovara sa Zapadom koji ga je naravno prevario, slagao kao i uvijek što rade. Uh, and to be quite honest, I was quite disappointed, uh, especially with the uh, former president of Serbia, Mr. Slobodan Milošević, due to the fact that he was getting engaged in negotiation with the West. He believed them and they tricked them uh, as usual. Uh, mm-hmm. That is the modus operandi that Western politicians does have. And he ended up as he ended up uh, in Hague. Možda vi ne znate, ali u Hagu Miloševića nisu osudili za ništa, ubili su ga tamo i po mom ličnom mišljenju Milošević nije napravio ništa da bi njemu sudili u Hagu, ali je napravio mnogo grešaka zbog kojih mu je trebalo suditi u Srbiji. Znači i u jedan i u drugi rat je ušao jer su ga naterali, ali nije smeo da izda ni nas borce, ni naš narod. Za izdaju svog naroda treba da odgovara. I also would like to point out that uh, maybe you do, you are not aware, but Slobodan Milošević was never convicted in an international tribunal in Hague. He died there, uh, and uh, if he was guilty, he was guilty in front of the Serbian popula- uh, people uh, due, to, due to the fact that he made so many mistakes, uh, but those mistakes uh, definitely... Uh, put Serbian uh, people in a much harsh uh, environment uh, than before. I'm interested in knowing personally what what civilian work did you do once the war ended? Mene zanima čime si se ti bavio kada je rad završio? Koji je to posao koji si ti obavljao? Ja sam kao mali učio, kako kaže, aluminijumska i PVC stolarija, pravio sam prozore vrata, radio sam kod jednog privatnika dugo vreme, a kasnije sam otvorio svoju firmu. Uh, I was heavily involved in construction business, predominantly I was, uh, to be quite honest, I do not know what will be the proper word in English, but he was uh, installing the windows and the doors, uh, which are made out of the aluminium and PVC. When I got back from Iraq, I got into film. I always wanted to make videos and tell stories, documentaries. Um, did you see yourself going back into the military or were you like, I'm, I'm done with this after this war? Recimo, ja kada sam se vratio iz Iraka, ja sam krenio u stvaranje filma, uh, filmova uh, i videa, meni se to svidelo. A što se tebe tiče, uh, um, kada se uh, rad završio, da li si ti hteo da se ponovo, da li je tebi nedostajala armija, da li je tebi nedostajala vojska? Uopšte nije. Znači, uopšte nije nedostajala. Ja volim jedan život, volim životinje, ratuješ zato što moraš. Ali ja knjige pišem uh, no. tako. I ti si snimao filmove, a ja sam pisao knjige. Well, fact of the matter is, you went into a film business and I wrote the books. I have to uh, be quite honest with you, no, I did not feel any regret that I left the army because due to the fact that I'm a peaceful person, I really do love animals, I love to be, I love freedom, I love to be on air. Uh, so, no, I did not miss uh, military whatsoever. But in war, you have to understand that in war you have to, uh, you go only because you have to. So do I understand correctly that from the end of the Kosovo war up until 2014, peace, it was peace for you? Da se me tebe dobro razumio, znači da od 1999. rat na Kosovo i do Yes. You are quite correct. What walk me through what brought you back into military service at that point? Da li možeš da mi objasniš šta šta je te onda uh, povuklo da se vratiš u vojsku, odnosno ponovo počneš ratovati? Rusi koji su bili dobrovoljci kod nas, pozvali su me kad je počelo uh, kad su počela dešavanja na Krimu. Uh, jednostavno su pozvali, rekli su da li hoćeš da dođeš, da vratiš dug. Ja sam jednom prilikom rekao, ako vam bude trebala pomoć, javite se, ja ću doći. 
ostavio sam posao odmah, dobro plaćen posao i otišao na Krim. Well, to be quite honest, I had a pretty good and decent uh, business uh, in Serbia. Uh, and then I just received a phone call from one of those Russian volunteers that were with me in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and on Kosovo. They asked me to come to join them in order to help them uh, on the situation on Crimea Peninsula. And so I just drop everything. And of course, in my mind, that was the death of honor. So I had to go, I had to help them out and to repay my debt. Can you elaborate? Mislio sam se vratiti opet poslu, jer to se završilo brzo i bez ikakvih problema. Međutim, kada sam video prve slike koje su došle sa Donbasa, gde su ukrajinski vojnici marširali sa nacističkim zastavama, jednostavno nisam mogao da ne odem tamo i da produžim vrat na desa. Moj deda se borio protiv nacista i ja sam morao to da produžim. I was uh, at the belief that I will go home as soon as the situation in Crimea uh, stabilized, uh, which, as you do know, did not take uh, too much time to stabilize as, as is. Uh, but when I started to pack my bags, I saw on the television uh, the reports how the Ukrainian soldiers uh, attacked Donbass uh, they attacked it not only with Ukrainian flag, they had a Nazi flag uh, on them as well. And uh, that is the thing that uh, keep me there, because my grandpa was fighting against Nazi, and therefore I just followed that steps. Uh, uh, and I had to go to fight with the Nazi as well. So you fought then in the Donbass between 2014 and 2018? To znači ti se onda borio od 2014. do 2018. godine u Donbasu? Da, od 2014. do avgusta 2018. Tada sam bio teško ranjen, inače ja imam pet puljevih ranjenija. Izbijena su mi sve sustavi, sva pleća, vrat, imam osam kontuzija. Kad je jedna od kontuzija bila takva da su mi krvi išla i na uši i na oči, Nisam neko vreme mogao uopšte da pričam, tako da i 2018. je teško ranjen, otišao sam bio da se lečim, oženio se i onda je prišlo vreme da se ponovo vraćam kad je krenula specijalna vojna operacija. Ti bi se od 2014. do augusta 2018. Uh, nevertheless, I had uh, five different uh, wounds made by the bullets, and uh, I was under the artillery fire, enemy artillery fire for several times. I had so many concussions, so many, so many um, damage of my internal organs. Uh, so at that time, I had to go to recoup myself. So I went into uh, Russia, I got married. And I returned back when the special operation started in Ukraine in February 2022. Can you walk me through what was the combat like in the Donbass at that time? How would you compare it to Kosovo? Uh, would you be so uh, kind and just uh, be more precise? When you say Donbass, are you referring to 2014, 2018? Yes. Okay. Yeah, could you, could you explain? Da li možeš da objasniš kakva je razlika bila u ratu na Donbasu od 2014. do 2018. i Kosova? Da li ima neki sličnosti ili je to sve potpuno drugačije? Ne, nema nikakve sličnosti. U ratu na Kosovu jedino je u jednom reonu Kosova. Da, jesi čujemo? Sada ti čujem. Da, rekao, nema nikakvih sličnosti, zato što u ratu na Donbasu su uglavnom sve direktni udari, a na Kosovu, samo na jednom delu teritorije, su pokušali da probiju našu odbranu zajedno. Tamo su bili i Francuzi, i Englezi, i 
najomnici Amerikanci i Albanska armija nisu uspjeli, a na svim drugim teritorijama Srbije uglavnom se je bilo bombardovanje. A na Donbasu tamo su bliske borbe, prsa u prsa može se reći. Well, there is a huge difference due to the fact that, for example, on Kosovo and Metsohija, there was uh, only one uh, place where uh, the Kos so-called Kosovo Liberation Army and Kosovo uh, and Albanian Army, uh, supported by uh, some French soldiers, English soldiers, United States soldiers, they are trying to break through our defense line. Uh, and uh, to the best of my knowledge, they were quite unsuccessful. Uh, in quite contrast, in Donbass, there was a uh, close combat on uh, various locations. Uh, so it is very hard to compare it, uh, especially that uh, rest of the Serbia was under the constant bombardment by the NATO aircrafts, which did not happen in Donbass at, uh, between 2014 and 2018. What are some of the ways that technology has changed warfare since 2000? Uh, da, uh, kako je tehnologija promijenila način ratovanja od 2000. godine na ovom? Ovo vidi, 2014. godine kad je počeo rat, ratovalo se klasično. Znači sve ono što smo mi učili uh, kao vojnici, uh, znači maskirovka, vojna taktika, uh, sve je bilo standardno do pre jedno godinu dana kada su krenuli uh, Ukrajinci da koriste dronove uh, masovno i tada se sve promenilo. Znači, rat 2014, 2015, 2016 je bio jedan, a od prošle godine je počeo rat tehnologija. Well, uh, since 2014 up to, uh, let's say, to, uh, 2021, we had a conventional war, so which uh, means that we used a cl uh, classic military tactics uh, with camouflage, with uh, uh, tactical um, uh, units, uh, as we were told and we were taught uh, in our uh, Yugoslav army at that time. But in 2021, the Ukrainian side started to utilize drones and that changed pretty much everything due to the fact that right now we have a technological war, uh, much more technological than it was before. Ođe, uh, na primjer, ja sam uništio jednu grupu uh, američkih snajperista i uzeo sam njihovu opremu. Uh, tamo su bili jako moćni teplovizioni uređaji koje smo mi kasnije koristili i shvatili smo da sve to što smo mi ranije radili tipa maskiranja, više nema nikakvog smisla, jer s takvim moćnim teplovizijnim uređajima oni mogu mnogo toga da vide. Uh, at one point in Donbass, we managed to take out one group of American snipers, and uh, with them we found lots of different gears, equipment. Uh, predominantly do, do, those were a thermal vision cameras and thermal vision optics. And then I realized uh, that the uh, situation dramatically changed because there is no more night. Everything is visible just like a day. Do you use any thermal or night vision capabilities in, in your operations? Da li ti koristiš uh, termo ili noćne uh, uređaje u svojim operacijama? Da, sada ih koristim. Međutim, to što smo uzeli je bilo nešto najmoćnije što sam ja video. I, međutim, sada jako to brzo sve napreduje i mi smo mnogo takvih posle aparata kupili od ukrajinske armije, tako da je naša armija sad snabdevena sa njima, ali ih ima jako malo. Ja koristim i moja grupa takođe koristi, međutim i dalje mnogo fali. Uh, I just want to be very honest. Uh, yes, I did use an, uh, night visions and thermal uh, optics before, but uh, when I compare whatever I had 
with uh, uh, equipment that we managed to take from those American snipers. It's just a childish game. That kind of equipment just was, to my mind, mind-blowing. I did not know uh, how far technology uh, went in uh, that regard. Right now, we do have a powerful uh, thermal visions and night optics. Nevertheless, uh, we do not have that in enough form. And I have to stress that we purchased lots of that equipment from Ukrainians. Can you elaborate a little bit about how drone warfare has changed war? What are some of the ways that you do you shoot them down or do you use them yourself to spot people? What, how have UAVs changed war? Da li možeš da nam malo pojasniš kako su dronovi promenili način ratovanja? Da li je to samo pokušavate da ih uništite ili ih možda i vi koristite za izviđanje i za napade? Što se tiče drona, ranije smo mi izviđanje uglavnom vršili pešadijom. Znači mi idemo, mi idemo napred i izviđamo, kao, kao što su svi drugi radili. Međutim, sad nema nikakvog smisla ići napred, zato što najobičniji dron Mavic 3 uh, može mnogo dobro i pravilno da se koristi na prvoj liniji fronta. Znači, koristimo ih i mi, uh, Ukrajinci ih imaju mnogo, mnogo više i jako dobro umeju da ih koriste. So we went into, let's say, a woods, try to uh, investigate is there any uh, enemy soldier. But right now we do not do that anymore. Right now we are using um, uh, drones uh, and even a small Mavic 3 DJI uh, quadcopter is much better option to use uh, for the uh, recon missions. Uh, and I have to uh, admit that Ukrainians are pretty skillful in using those drones and uh, they have uh, much more that, uh, than we have. Along those lines, how have you, have you noticed Ukrainian training skills uh, fight change since 2014? Have their, has their army changed much since 2014? Da li možeš da uporediš ukrajinsku armiju iz 2014. i sada? Da li ima nekih pomaka? Da li su bolje organizovani? Da li su bolje obučeni nego što su bili 2014. Što se tiče pešadije, znači kakve su bili kukavice i loši vojnici, takvi su i današnji dan. Uh, if we are talking about infantrymen, no, I cannot say that there is a great difference. Uh, I do believe that they are cowards and they are not that great soldier on the field. Uglavnom, borbe među njima i nama traju maksimum tamo po pola sata, 40 minuta i oni koji nisu poginuli ili se predaju ili begaju. Uh, predominantly, whenever we get into close combat, the fight does not last more than 30, 45 minutes. And after that, they are surrendering themselves uh, predominantly. Međutim, što se tiče artiljerije, oni su napredovali u odnosu na 2014-2015 godinu, verovatno tamo 10.000 procenata. Uopšte, znači ona armija koja je bila ukrajinska sa artiljerijom na početku rata, ova sadašnja je sasvim druga. Mnog, mnogo su napredovali, jako mnogo. Uh, in regards to artillery, I can say that there is a huge quantum leap, we can say. It. They are ten, at least 10 times, 10,000 times more precise than they were in 2014. Uh, you cannot compare those two uh, armies in, uh, in that regard. They become much more precise and they are utilizing artillery in uh, uh, excellent manner. You say that you your feelings about Ukrainian soldiers are that they are cowards. Would you agree with the theory that you should not underestimate your enemy? Ti si rekao da su Ukrajinci kukavice, a ti se možda ne bi složio s time da ne treba podcenjivati protivnika. Ja ih ne podcenjujem, prosto ja se borio s njima i video sam kako su oni bore.
Na primjer, od početka ovog rata mi imamo nekih 7-8 hiljada njihovih zarobljenih vojnika. You asked me for my opinion and I gave you exactly as is. You do know, I do respect my opponents, but then again, I always speak with open minds and I try to state the facts as I see it. As you do know, currently we have some somewhere between seven to eight thousand uh, of Ukrainian soldiers in uh, as POW. And what are your prijatelj pre tobom je najbolji na svetu. Znači ti, ti se trenutno boriš protiv najboljeg neprijatelja na svetu koji postoji i tako moraš da ideš u napad. E sad šta tamo bude? Je. Uglavnom nema toga da ja pocenjujem, nikad nisam pocenjivao protivnika. I never underestimate my enemy due to the fact that whenever we are trying to go to attack uh, the enemy positions I always try to convey the message to my fellow soldiers that the enemy in front of us are the best possible soldiers in the world and we have to be very careful how we are going to conduct ourselves during that attack but what is uh, what will happen well uh, situation uh, was as it was we're talking about how war has changed how technology has changed war you were telling me a story of how you now are able to speak directly with Ukrainian snipers on social media, connect with them, meet and pick a place to meet and fight. Can you tell me about that experience? Because this is, to me, completely new in war. Ono što je za mene novo u ovom ratu i koliko je tehnologija promenila način ratovanja, je i taj razgovor koji, koji, koji si ti meni, na prošlom razgovoru koji si ti meni rekao, da se ti preko socijalnih mreža dogovarao sa ukrajinskim snajperistima za duele i da se dogovarali gde ćete se naći i da izvršite taj duel. Da li bi mogao malo više da, mi, da kažeš o tome? Ja početka rata kao i svaki snajperista, bio sam neizvestan. Međutim, praviteljstvo Srbije je bukvalno maltretiralo bivšu ženu i sina i ja sam izašao u javnost. Posle toga su već... Da. Uh, at very beginning of that unfortunate war in Ukraine, I was pretty much unknown to anyone. Nevertheless, the government of Serbia they uh, come to my uh, house and they harassed my family, my wife and my son. Therefore, I uh, reveal my face on the camera and I uh, start to become known face on TV as a sniper, Serbian sniper. Posle toga, u jednom boju gde je bilo mnogo njihovih vojnika, uh, neću pričati sa cifre koliko sam ih uništio, međutim po raciji sam, preneo sam im uh, da se dobro čuvaju zato što je tu srpski snajper i da sa mnom nema zajebancije. I posto toga je krenuo lov na mene tamo. Um, there was a one um, battle uh, where we were involved with uh, significant amount of Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, I do not want to say uh, how many enemies did I destroy, but it was sizable. Uh, nevertheless, over the um, communication, we listened to Ukrainian communications as well. I heard that they were announcing that uh, there is a Serbian sniper on the Russian side and the soldiers has to be very careful because uh, he is no joke. I mean, a Serbian sniper is not a joke. U toj grupi koja je poginula bili su četiri snajperiste, a njihov učitelj je sebe nazivao Marijupoljskim bogom. I posle on mene našao u socijalnim mrežama i počeo da mi piše. Znači, prevedi. In that group that we had an encounter with, they had four snipers, 
uh, and all of them were destroyed. Uh, their instructor was a person from Mariupol. He called himself on the social networks as God of Mariupol. And after that battle, he searched uh, me, uh, looked for me in uh, social networks, and he found me. I ja prvo nisam to shvatao ozbiljno što je on meni pisao, međutim posle toga uh, počeo je da ubija civile i svaki put mi je slao uh, poruku na socijalnu mrežu e-kontakt i gde je pisao konkretno dan i gde je ubio uh, civila i gde ga je pogodio. Ja sam to proveravao i ispadalo je da je tačno. Uh, he was... Uh trying to organize duel with me over the social network but i didn't thought that it is uh for real i thought it was some some kind of a joke nevertheless uh after a few days he started to send me the pictures of uh civilians that he shoot uh inside of uh mariupol or some other villages then he wrote uh, exact dates, time, and places where he executed some of the civilians and how he executed them. I checked those uh, data and turned out to be a true. Then I accepted his challenge for the place and time. I onda je bukvalno me ucenjivao, rekao je, ako ne dođeš na taj deo fronta tamo, ja ću se tamo čekati, ja ću ponovo ubiti nekog od civila, I ja jednostavno nisam mogao da ne idem na ta mesta gde me on priglašavao, međutim, uglavnom on nije dolazio, slao je neke druge i sve te koje je slao bili su ubijeni. Do jednog trenutka, ako si gledao film Vojna rad snajpera, tamo ima taj trenutak kada sam ja na prvom zoni i mogu ubio. I posle toga su svi najbolji ukrajinski snajperisti koji su bili, pisali meni na V kontakte, priglašali na duele i više niko od njih nije živ. I have to point out that uh, there was certain blackmails issued by that uh, guard of Mariupol because he was challenging me to come to certain part of the front and if I do not show up, that he will kill another civilian until I show uh, myself. And of course, I accept those challenges, uh, but unfortunately, he was not, not there. He sent some of his students uh, to play the role uh, of uh, Cypher Duel uh, until uh, one day. And if you watch the uh, movie that we recommend you to watch, uh, you will find out that I found him on uh, Industrial Zone, and that was his end. I found him and I eliminating why would a ukrainian shoot civilians on their own side of their own country zašto bi ukrajinac ubivao civile na svojoj strani zašto bi odnosno ubivao svoje ukrajince vi treba nešto da shvatite tamo ne ratuju ukrajinci protiv ukrajinaca tamo ratuju nacisti realni nacisti kojima je sve jedno koje sa druge strane. You have to understand one thing. Uh, it is not a war where the Ukrainians are fighting ag uh, against Ukrainians. Uh, we, on their side we have a pure Nazi and they doesn't give a damn uh, with whom they are fighting with. Are they going to murder a civilian? Because a uh, Nazi does not have a nationality. Ste imali mogućnost da vidite, Luganski je bombardovala ukrajinska avijacija, bombardovala je centar grada na početku rata gde uopšte nije bilo nikakve armije, bili su obični civili i poginulo je mnogo ljudi. Ukrajinska avijacija je bombardovala plaže gde se kupala deca, sve to imate na internetu, možete da vidite gde su deca ubijene. Za njih li ovde koji su to su ruski, za njih ti civili nisu ukrajinci, to su prosto ljudi koje treba uništiti. Uh, you have to understand that at the very beginning of this war, uh, Ukrainian um, aviation, they bombard the Luhansk city, even though there was no military uh, unit in it. So they uh, purely killed civilians over there. 
uh, they even bombarded some beaches uh, on the rivers uh, near to Donetsk and Lugansk uh, cities as well, uh, which definitely does explain that they do not care are they going to kill a uh, civilian or an, uh, or a soldier due to the fact that they do not treat uh, any per uh, person who is uh, within the Donetsk or Lugansk uh, People's Republic as uh, Ukrainian. They treat them as Russian, they treat them as subhuman. So it is uh, a person that has to be eliminated. Yes, you can see that you can see it on the internet. Uh, and definitely you can find uh, loads of videos that corroborate my words on YouTube. It's not Russian videos only. You can find that the uh, Ukrainian side also uh, put them online and uh, even some independent journalists as well. So, so you have a video where Ukrainska armija, ne ukrajinska armija, nego ti nacionalni bataljoni u Mariupolju 9. maja uh, doveli su bili tešku, teško naružanje, znači mitraljeze 12-7 mm i snimali su kako ubijaju ukrajinske policajce koji su služili u to vreme. Znači napali su kasarnu da bi oduzeli oružje, pobili su sve ukrajinske policajce, to su snimili i pustili su taj video, on postoji. Uh, iz kog razloga? Da bi ih se svi plašili. Često se deša, aj, uh, posliju prevesti. There is also a video uh, freely online uh, that happened, it took place on 9th of May, uh, where those Nazi battalions arrived in Mariupol. They had a high caliber uh, 12.7 millimeter uh, machine gun, and they fired upon the police officers, uh, just shooting them, destroying them. Uh, and then they attacked the barrack, uh, the military barrack inside of Mariupol, and took arms for themselves. Uh, why did they do that? Uh, just uh, to install the fear in ordinary civilians. Did you fight in Mariupol? Dali se ti bori u Mariupolu? Ne, kad su bile borbe u Mariupolju, sada ove godine, ja sam bio na Kijevskom pravcu. No, in 2022, while the battle for Mariupol was raging, I was uh, near Kiev at that time. Okay, I, I'm having trouble understanding why a Ukrainian sniper would sh purposely shoot civilians in Mariupol when their stated goal was to recapture that city? It, it doesn't compute for me. Ono što meni nije jasno, zašto bi ukrajinski snajper ubijao civila ako su oni pokušavali da oslobode taj grad. Meni se čini da se on gubi u godinama, znači da je on nije shvatio 2014-2022. To se dešavalo od 2014. i 2015. i oni nisu ubijali civile u Mariupolju, ubijali su civile u Donjecku, pošto je linija fronta bukvalno išla kroz grad. Dva grada koji, Marinka i Peski, oni bukvalno su tu jedan uz drug, Donjecki i Marinka, i oni izađu na tamo jedna ulica Deli. Looks like that I have to apologize, looks like that I misinterpret. Uh, so here is the, um, the real story. Uh, he did not, that God of Mariupol, he did not kill uh, civilians inside of the city of Mariupol. Uh, everything happens in 2014, 2015. He killed civilians in Donetsk uh, city, in a pesky, uh, that is a suburb of uh, Donetsk, uh, due to the fact that uh, battle line was pretty much right to the middle uh, of the of the city so for me so if I, I i understand that better to me it sounds like ukrainian soldiers view according to you they view civilians in donetsk as russian civile u Donetsku vidjeli kao ruske.
Yes. Ah, no. Okay. Yeah. Is, okay. I, I understand what, what you're saying now. Um, so moving on uh, to the. Just a moment. Da bi, ovaj, da bi bolje razumeo, znači nisu svi ukrajinski vojnici takvi. Sa ukrajinske strane je imalo mnogo pravilnih vojnika koji su ratovali protiv nas, protiv vojnika. Znači treba da se napravi razlika između nacističkih bataljona koji tamo postoje i ukrajinskih vojnika. To su sasvim dve različite stvari. Često se dešavalo da su ukrajinski vojnici nama davali koordinate gde se nalaze nacistički bataljoni da bi ih mi uništavali. Before we go uh, further, I just want to uh, clear a few things. We have to make a clear distinctions between Ukrainian army and Nazi battalion, um, fascist battalion that were organized inside the Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainian army, they are trying to have a fight with us, I mean with the soldiers. Uh, uh, the Nazi battalion uh, are always try to get an easy target. And you also have to understand that on numerous occasions, uh, the members of the Ukrainian army gave us exact coordinates where the Nazi battalion are located and situated in order to, uh, for us to eliminate them. Okay. Some, some of the people in the chat are asking, they're curious, what unit were you serving with during this time? And what unit was the Ukrainian sniper, God, what was his name? God something? But God do, you know of what unit, do you know what unit he was serving in? Uh, to vreme ja sam bio u Lički Zahačenka, naš bataljon koji je bio pod njegovom komandom, zvao se bataljon Čečen, a on, ja, ja ne znam gde je on služio, ja mislim da je on bio odeljeno od svih drugih brigada. Ja ne mogu sada da kažem da je bio u Azovu, u Ajdaru, stvarno ne mogu da kažem u kojoj brigadi on služio. Uh, at that time, I was in battalion called Chechen. Uh, we were under direct control of the president of Donetsk People's Republic. And in regards to the guard of Mariupol, I cannot say uh, with certainty was he part of the Azov battalion or some other battalion. I really do not know. And it, did I understand correctly when we spoke the other day that you stayed in touch with a friend of his that you still communicate with a friend of the that sniper that you killed uh koliko se na tebe razumeo ti si ostao u kontaktu sa jednim prijateljem od snajperiste kojeg si ti eliminisao da li je to prijatelj od tog boga Mariupola ne to je prijatelj snajperiste koji se zvao deduška no prevod od tog deduška uh, no, uh, I am in contact with a friend of the former Ukrainian sniper who were fighting under the nickname Grandpa. In Russian, it will be Djedushka. Uh, that was uh, yet another sniper that I had a duel with. I takođe u jako dobrim odnosima sam bio sa devojkom koju su poslali iz Amerike da obučava ukrajinske snajperiste u bataljonu Ajdar. Mi smo se mnogo prepisivali, mnogo smo se no, razgovarali. Ja tri godine smo se mi prepisivali. I also have a very good connection uh, and uh, ex excellent relationship with uh, one uh, lady from the United States. She was instructor, the sniper instructor for the battalion Ajdar. We keep in touch for pretty much three years. Um, so Yes, we have a very decent conversation uh, among us. So you had a you'd set up another sniper duel through social media with another sniper. Can you explain how that went? To znači ti si imao to je bio drugi snajperski duel koji si ti dogovorio preko socijalnih mreža. Njih je bilo sedam. 
I had several, seven different uh, sniper duels uh, organized uh, via a social network. I to ja nisam nikog priglašavao, oni su meni pisali, a ne ja njim. And they all, uh, they were always the initiator, they were contacting me and uh, challenged me to come to have a duel with them. Možete da pogledate film tamo, Rad Snajpera, on je sa engleskim prevodom i tam, tada će vam sve postati mnogo jasnije. Uh, you can take a look at that movie that I send it to you. I, uh, there is uh, English subtitles uh, as well, so it will be uh, much easier for you to understand what actually did happen. I watched a lot of it, and uh, yeah, I, I want to clarify for, for the viewers so that they who haven't seen it um, can understand. Ja sam pogledao dosta od tog filma, čekaj mi da moji gledalci također pogledaju, tako da možemo da bolje razumemo situaciju. Mnogo je prostije kad je rat između dve države. Tad je sve mnogo prošće. Naprimjer, kad ste vi bili u Iraku, vi ste amerikanci s jedne strane, iračani su sa druge strane, neki irački savjeznici su s vama, to je sve mnogo prostije, ali kad je unutar, kad je građanski rat, to je jako komplikovano, zato što je sve zamašeno. Špijuna ima i s jedne i s druge strane. Bolesnih ljudi koji su uzeli oružje u ruke ima i s jedne i s druge strane. Ne postoji ni u jednom ratu potpuno ispravna jedna strana, gdje su svi tamo lepi, dobri, pametni, tako nema toga, ne biva. Mnogi neki idu u rat... A, daj. Uh, there is a huge difference uh, between uh, this war in Ukraine and with the war that, uh, for example, you fought in Iraq. In Iraq, we had two sides, two countries that were fighting uh, against each other. Uh, here in Ukraine, we have uh, such a mixture. Uh, the families are divided. One part of the family or one son is on one side, another one is on another side. You have to understand that there is so many people uh, who are living in the different parts of Ukraine, maybe under the Ukrainian law, uh, rule, but they do believe that uh, they should be part of the Russia and vice versa. There is some people who are living in the Donetsk People Republic and they do believe, strongly believe that they should be part of Ukraine. So we can say there is uh, such a mixture, such chaos because it's pure um, civil war. It's not a, a war um, between two countries. It is internal war. You might, be you might be surprised the similarities with Iraq. There were a lot of different factions. You had the Sunnis, the Shiites, the Kurds. It was, in a way, a civil war there as well. Ne znam da li znaš, ali i u Iraku nije baš bilo sve tako čisto i tamo postoje Sunni, Šija, Kurdi. Također možemo da kažemo da je kod njih bio građanski rat unutra. Ali za vas kao stranca to nije bio građanski rat. Then again, you as a foreigner, you as United States military, you have a clear line between yourself and your enemy. Šiti i suniti, oni ratuju od kad postoje. Kurdi nemaju svoju državu, oni su i raku borili da bi dobili jedan deo teritorije da bude njihova država. To je njihov unutrašnji rat, ali za vas kao strance sve je mnogo prošće. Šija i suni mafoj, oni su fighting each other for the hundreds of years. Kurds, as such, they do not have their own countries, a country called them own, so they are trying to get some territory for themselves. Uh, we can understand all of that. But then again, uh, you as a member of US military, you have a clear cut such as this is my line, this is my friend, and uh, whoever is on the other side is my enemy. We do not have that clear line. You feel like the lines are more blurred in Ukraine. What does that cause problems? Ti misliš da su linije razdvajanja među našim snagama i ukrajinskim snagama pomešane, da je vama puno teže ratovati? 
ja niš nisam razumio. Uh, njegovo pitanje, da li ti misliš da su u Ukrajini uh, linije ne tako jasne koji je protiv koga i samim time da si zbog toga što nije jasno koji je tvoj neprijatelj, da je vama težo? Pa ne, ovde se jasno zna ko je protiv koga, uh, međutim svejedno to je građanski rat. Ovde se dešava da je, na primjer, kod mene u bataljonu je ratovao čovek, a njegov sin je ratovao u bataljonu Azov protiv nas. Zbog toga je to sve komplikovano. Well, uh, I will give you an example uh, why do I believe it's much more complicated. Uh, one of the members of my battalion, he had a son, and his son was uh, fighting for the Nazi battalion. Uh, Azov ili Aydar? Azov. Uh, he fights for the Azov battalion. Uh, so you can un- uh, just try to uh, understand how difficult it uh, was for that uh, gentleman to fight with Azov battalion, knowing that his son might be there. I can't even, honestly can't even imagine what that would be like. I have no point of reference, but I can appreciate how difficult that must be of a situation. Yeah. Ja, meni je jako teško da razumem, a, zato što nikada se nisam susretao sa takvom situacijom, ali mogu samo da zamislim da je to izuzetno teška situacija. I još malo bit će građanski rat u Americi, tako da će moći da razumem. Uh, looks like there will be a civil war even in the United States of America. Uh, so you might be able to understand that at that point. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the North versus the South this time. I guess it'll be the Republicans versus the Democrats. Ne znam da li će to biti rat jug protiv severa ili će to biti rat republikanaca protiv demokrata. Pa verovatno rat republikanaca protiv demokrata i sve vas polako vodi k tome. Ali najbolje bi bilo da ga ne bude, da se političari dogovore. Međutim, šansa da ne bude rata je jako mala, zato što je jako mnogo slobodnog kapitala koji oni moraju negde da rasporede. Uglavnom svi ratovi idu u financije, ništa drugo. Demokratija to je čista... Well, uh, in, in, my, in my mind, uh, looks like there will be a fight among, uh, between Democrats and Republicans. I really do hope that it won't come to that. Uh, but then again, everything leads to that, uh, due to the fact that uh, rhetoric from both sides is uh, such flammable that uh, at least in my mind everything goes in that direction due to the fact that lots of uh, free capital is uh, utilized to stir problems among ordinary people and as you do know um, every war starts and ends due to the economics. Verovatno bi mu bilo interesantno da popriča sa Oljom, to je devojka koja je snimala film, ona kada je, film Rat Snajpera, ona kada je prvi put uzimala od mene intervju, rekla je da sam ja radikalno budala. Well, I do believe that it will be very helpful for you to have an interview with the director of that movie, uh, Sniper War. Her name is Olja. Uh, due to the fact that when we met and when she took my first interview, she called me a radical idiot. But uh, zato što sam i tada rekao da će sve šta će da bude narednih 7-8 godina, ja sam joj ispričao. Objasnio sam joj da će zbog, da, da će uh, biti ono tipa Blake Lives, kako se oni već nazivaju, da će tako nešto da krene u Evropi. Tačno sam joj rekao kad će da krenu problemi u Belorusiji, zatim na Kavkazu da će biti rat i posle toga da će biti jako velik rat na Ukrajini. Znači sve što je bilo, ja sam joj sve to rekao nekih pet godina unapred, a ona mi se tada smejala, a sad se čudi kako sam to mogao da znam. U principu sve je to jako prosto ako se neko bavi ozbiljno široko analitikom. The fact of the matter is, I explained to her what is going to happen in the Middle East. I explained to her that it will be a huge crisis in Europe. I explained to her that it will be a war on Caucasus. 
uh, I did explain to her that it will be a major battle in Ukraine. Uh, she didn't believe me at that time, but uh, right now she does understand that if you analyze situation properly, you can come to a conclusion what might happen next. Well, the civil war in America won't happen as long as those Russian bots stay off of Facebook. <laughs> Uh, ja mislim uh, da rata u Americi neće biti uh, dok je god uh, ruski botovi, uh, ako se maknu ruski botovi sa uh, mrežom. I'm joking, of course. I, um, I'd like to move into the... Can you explain the lead up to the battle in Kiev, the lead up to the invasion or whatever you want to call it, in 2022 how did you find yourself in were you in belarus can you walk me through how you met up with a unit there what unit did you fight with in kiev can you explain that lead up to the invasion dali možeš da mi objasniš situaciju tvoja koja je prethodila tvom napadu na kiev invaziju kijeva kako god tebi odgovara uh, ti si krenio iz Belorusije, kako si došao u tu jedinicu, uh, kojim putevima uh, i kako se to sve desilo? Kako, kako u jedinicu kako si došao? Pa u jedinicu u kojoj si bio, znači uh, ti si nastupao sa nekom jedinicom uh, na Kijevu. Da, to, to, su, to je naša specijalna jedinica za specijalne zadatke. Mi smo krenuli tamo da bi navukli na sebe tri ukrajinske armije, da bi ih vezali na sebe kako oni ne bi mogli da krenu u pomoć ukrajinskoj armiji koja je bila u Luganskom pracu, zato što je prvi osnovni zadatak bio da se oslobodi Luganska republika. Well, I was the member of the special forces uh, and uh, we arrived to Kiev front from Belarus, as you mentioned. Uh, our uh, task was to pin down three Ukrainian armies that were situated in and around Kiev and to disallow them possibility to send any reinforcements to Lugansk uh, People Republic. Because at that time, the main uh, uh, focus of the Russian uh, army and uh, Lugansk uh, People Army was to liberate uh, the whole Lugansk Ukrajince je kao krasna marama, crvena marama za bika kad se pomene ruski VDV i tamo gde smo mi bili, znači naša armija, bila je i ruska armija, bili su njih ruski VDVšniki i to je unosilo veliki strah i to je jedan od razloga zašto oni nisu smeli da napuste Kijev. Bojali se da ćemo mi ući u Kijev i realno ga zavrati. Pretty much the whole, uh, well, I really don't know how to call that, an army that was coming to, uh, to Kijev, uh, they will consist of the special forces of the uh, Donetsk People's Republic, Lugansk People's Republic, and uh, by the Russian paratrooper trooper as well. Uh, that was uh, used as uh, scaremongering tactics to Ukrainians because they were quite afraid that such a force might be able to overtake or even to liberate, as we might say, or occupy, as you might say, Kiev itself. Therefore, we pinned down the whole three army and they froze, they were unable to send any reinforcement into Lugansk uh, People's Republic. How did you insert into Ukraine? Did you go in on foot? Were you mechanized in an armored unit? Did you fly in? How did you, in, how did you move Kako into si... Ukraine? Kako si ti ušao u Ukrajinu? Da li si ušao peške? Da li si ušao na nekoj od uh, tehnici? Uh, da li su te možda prebacili avionom? Znači, kojim putem? Pešadija, uh, mehanizovana uh, brigada ili je to bilo vazično? Specijalci idu mehanizovanim brigadami. Naši momci su 
za nekoliko sati zauzeli aerodrom Gastomelj, a naš posao je bio da očistimo put do tog aerodroma da bi mogla da stiže municija, hrana i sve što je potrebno. I mi smo za nekoliko dana uspeli da, da, da provedemo taj zadatak u delu. To be honest, uh, the operation uh, to Kiev was uh, done in two stages. The first stage was the paratrooper uh, came to Gostomel Airport and uh, they occupied the Gostomel Airport and then my group uh, went in to, on to mechanize, as a mechanized brigade so uh, in order to clear the road and to bring supplies and uh, rearmament for them as well and to cook with them what weapon did you use how far into ukraine did you end up going personally kako se oruje koristio i dokle si ti stigao u ukrajinu znači do kojeg mjesta si stigao pa ja sam stigao do gastomelja uglavnom sve te terene smo zauzeli Koristio sam snajpersku pušku koju sam 2016. godine kupio od jednog ukrajinskog vojnika, to je finska puška Sako TRG 22-308 kalibra. I had Sako TRG, the Finnish uh, sniper rifle, the one that I bought of the Ukrainian soldier uh, in 2016. Uh, um, I was uh, situated near to airport Gostomel and we, uh, I went the whole um, um, length from the Belarusian, uh, Belarusian uh, border all, all the way to the Gostomel airport. The drugi snajperist in my group had Vintoke Kalibra 12.7 i 408 Kalibra. Other uh, snipers in my group, they had an, uh, sniper rifles, uh, high caliber, uh, 12.7 millimeters. Uh, what is the caliber? 400. 400. And, four, and 408 caliber. So, the Russian sniper pushed and the patron who they made special for that push. That's a Russian uh, sniper rifle uh, with a special bullet for that rifle, and they call that 408 caliber. So, from my understanding and what I looked at from the intelligence reports that I've seen, Russia attempted to make it all the way to Kiev. They were stopped and forced to retreat. And the battle for in Kiev did not go the Russians' way, that they lost a lot of armored units due to the Javelin and Enlaw anti-tank systems, and that the attack was repelled. For information, I have, the goal was to take Kiev, but the Russian army did not manage to take Kiev to the whole city of Kiev. Imala je ogromne gubitke u tehnici i uh, Ukrajina je uspjela da potisne rusku armiju nazad od Kijeva. Da li ste slažu s tim? To su vaše informacije, a ja sam bio na licu mesta, znam kako je bilo. Prvih 3-4 dana realno su bili poprilično veliki gubici. U, u principu kakav se rat vodio, gubici i nisu veliki, međutim nisu bili ni mali. Um, Posle toga se promenio sistem naše gratovanja i gubici su se sveli na minimum. Znači, oni nisu nikog potisnuli, mi smo jednostavno ispunili zadata koji smo imali i otišli. Kijev je ogroman grad sa jako mnogo vojnika koji su bili tada u njemu, a mi smo ceo taj posao obavili sa nekih 8000 ljudi u priliku. Well, you have your, your own information, uh, but I am telling you exactly what happened due to the fact that I was there. Uh, fact of the matter is, uh, yes, we did have uh, serious losses in the first three, four days uh, due to some incompetence of the Russian uh, officers. 
Um, but after that, after we um, survived those childhood um, illness, uh, everything after that went pretty much smoothly, which does not mean that we did not suffer any casualties. Yes, we did. But uh, amount of our casualties is pretty low in comparison what kind of the action we uh, were engaged in. Uh, we fulfill our task. We uh, mm, pinned down uh, a Ukrainian army. And soon as uh, our command uh, structure uh, decided that uh, uh, Lugansk uh, People Republic had enough success on their ends, uh, we start to retreat. So trust me on one thing, no one pushed Russian army back. We withdrew ourselves uh, by our own accord. There, at the time, there was a lot of media reports about a long convoy heading from Belarus all the way down to Hostomel Airport about where you might have been. You probably were around there at that time. Is there anything, because we were told that this eight mile long convoy of trucks and tanks ran out of fuel, that the tires weren't working and that it got stopped at that point and it turned around. Is there anything you could tell me about this long convoy? Ruske tehnike iz Belorusije koja je bila dugačka 8 milja, 8 km na zemlječno. Informacije koje mi imamo to je da, da ste ostali bez goriva, da su gume bile neispravne, da su motori bili neispravni i da su se zbog toga okrenuli i otišli. Šta ti možeš da kažeš o svemu tome? E, pogotovo što ta kolona kretala od Belorusije ka gostomljeno. Da li e, vi stvarno možete da verujete da Rusija, koja je jedan od najvećih izvoznika goriva, može da dozvoli da, da armija ostane bez goriva. I ako su ostali bez goriva, kako su se mogli ukrenuti i vratiti nazad? To, to su priče za malu djecu. Ja ne mogu da verujem da neko može da poveruje u to. Can you honestly believe that uh, due to the fact that Russia is one of the major oil producer in the world can allow themselves to leave their trucks and vehicles without fuel. Uh, and after that, that those vehicles had enough fuel to go back to Belarusia. Don't you find that funny and strange? So we did not have a fuel to go further, but we had the fuel to go back? That's the childish story. Who can believe in that? Personally, I always thought that that convoy did not run out of fuel or have problems with maintenance or anything like that. I do believe that the Russian forces were repelled by force and had to retreat. But I am curious more about what what happened with that convoy. That it were they bringing supplies? Uh, uh, po mom mišljenju, uh, ruska vojska je bila poražena i nju je, uh, ona je otišla, na, uh, povukla se nazad zbog poraza koji je pretrpila. Uh, da, da li bi ti mogao da nam kažeš malo više o toj koloni? Uh, šta je ona, da li ona predvozila uh, municiju, hranu? Uh, šta, je, šta se zapravo desilo sa tom kolonom? Ja prvi put čujem da postoji kolona koja je dugačka 8 km. To je u ratu, to je nerealno. Niko ne može da pošalje kolonu dugačku 8 km u zonu borbenih dejstava gde lete helikopteri, avioni, nema. To, to, to je, je li ima neke video snimak? Mi je baš interesantno sad da, da saznam o tome nešto. Ja prvi put to čujem. Naše kolone su bile dugačke po možda maksimum kilometar, maksimum kilometar su bile dugačke I uglavnom prvih 3-4 dana rata kad, su, kad je ukrajinska artiljerija uspevala, znači oko Gastomelja i tamo u Bući, na primjer, da nakrije dve, tri naše kolone i tamo je izgubljeno realno dosta tehnike, nekih sigurno 50-60 jedinica, 
tehnike za tih 3-4 dana, posle toga se naši kretali u jako malim grupama, po 4-5 vozila, ništa većih 8 km, to je prosto naučna fantastika. Well, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, I never heard, never saw any column eight kilometers or miles long. The you as a military should understand one thing. Uh, who in the right mind will send such a huge long column um, in a war zone uh, where the helicopters and uh, airplanes are buzzing over your heads? All the columns were uh, mat one kilometer long uh, and we did suffer tremendous losses uh, near Yukostamil airport because of the size of the columns. Uh, at one point we lost around 50 units of uh, our equi equipment, different ones, trucks, uh, APCs, uh, maybe some tanks, etc. due to the fact that Ukrainian artillery find us and destroyed us ever since, and that was uh, what happened in the first three, uh, four days. Ever since then, uh, our columns were quite short uh, in order to uh, away, uh, avoid uh, artillery barrage that come from Ukrainian side to avoid uh, their helicopters, to avoid their airplanes. Uh, we also try to hide ourselves. Uh, but would you be so kind and just uh, give me some sort of the link where I can see uh, that eight miles or kilometers long uh, column because I'm quite interested to see that. It is ludicrous in my mind. Znaš kako, mnogo je bilo naših, na primjer, naših kamiona, često su ih vozili prazne Jednostavno su ih vozali tamo vamo da bi zavarali neprijatelja. Često se toga dešavalo, ali to, to nisu bile tako velike kolone da bi to bilo prosto prvi put. Uh, we, quite often we used our trucks, uh, empty trucks, uh, and we drove them back and forth, left and right, in order to attract to, uh, uh, Ukrainian artillery, so we can find their position and uh, try to take them out. But uh, once again, I have to point out that I never heard for such a big column of Russian uh, soldiers uh, coming from uh, Belarusian to Kiev. I'll send you a link after the discussion. Um, what vehicle were you in when you came into Ukraine? U kakvom vozilu si ti ušao u Ukrajinu? Na mom ličnom auto. With my personal car. Ja inače od početka rata ratujem na svom autu sa svojom puškom koju sam ja kupio i sam sam uvek kupovao i municiju i drugari su mi bili pomogli da kupim mnogo dobar teplovizioni predsjednik. First of the matter is, ever since the, the, uh, I participate in the war, I always drive myself on my vehicle, I bought myself a rifle from a Ukrainian uh, soldier, and I buy myself ammunition for my own money. Uh, and I have, to, I have to point out that I manage with help of other people to get myself a decent uh, thermal vision scope. A drugi, druga armija je ulazila standardno na BTR i tenkovima, BVP i to no, standardno je uh, uh, Russian military uh, definitely went into uh, Ukraine on APCs, on tanks and uh, some other armored vehicles. Were you integrated into a squad of other foreign out fighters or were you kind of a lone wolf? Uh, that is the be integrated in the Ukraine. I was in the 
zato što jako mnogo inostranaca meni piše i hoće da dođu kao dobrovojci, međutim Rusi i dalje ne dozvoljavaju. Zašto? Ja ne znam. The fact of the matter is there is no uh, foreigners uh, over there uh, due to the fact that uh, Russia does not allow any foreign national to uh, go on uh, into a battle on their side. I really don't understand what is the reason for it. I went over there with battalion of Donetsk People's Republic. Uh, therefore, I was not a lone wolf. I was part of the battalion. Your whole battalion yeah. driving in personal yeah. cars? Yeah. 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 I kad smo došli do predeljene tačke, ja sam svoj auto ostavljao i dalje smo išli na bet. Well, it looks, it looks like that Dan did not understand your question properly. Uh, as he said, he came with his vehicle to a certain point. After that, he, uh, he left his vehicle uh, at that point and he went uh, further on APC. And the rest of the unit, of course, they utilize APCs as a transport vehicle. What type of APC? Koji je to bio tip pešadinskog oklopnog vozila? Klasični BTR. Well, uh, in Russian, it's BTR. Uh, which means that they are lightly armored, they are with a wheels, uh, six wheels, I believe. I really don't know what is the proper name in English. BTR, I'm familiar. Okay, BTR, yes. How did you find the BTR? Did you find the vehicle to be sufficient? Did it uh, work well for you? Did Was it damaged at any point? Uh, koje je tvoje mišljenje o BT, BTR koji ste vi koristili, da li je on dovoljno dobar, da li je on efikasan, da li je možda bio povređen u toku boja? BTR koje smo mi koristili, uh, uglavnom su to uh, stari obrazci btr i još iz sovjetskog uh, Većinu te tehnike smo uzeli Ukrajincima, na primjer, u, kad smo pravili Lovajski i Debajcevski kotao. Kad je bilo Debajcevo, uzeli smo 92 tenka koji su bili potpuno ispravni i uzeli smo municije, verovatno dve godine je moglo da se ratuje sa tom municijom. I jako mnogo BTR, ali to su sve bili stari BTR-i. Stari i tamo smo, na primjer, jednu trećinu tih BTR-a, nešto se pokvari i onda smo ih koristili da popravljamo druge. Imali smo jako dobre mehaničare. Inače smo mi... Do početka ovih operacija, 24. februara, imali u Donetskoj republiki oko 450 tenkova koji su bili u voznom stanju. Well, in regards to BTR, the one that we used uh, in that uh, operation, those were the old ones uh, from Soviet Union. Uh, predominantly, the got them from Ukrainian army that we caught in cauldrons uh, in uh, Debalcevo, uh, which was sometimes uh, 2016. I also would like to point out that we captured 90 tanks uh, at that point of time. Uh, all of them were in immaculate conditions and we get an ammunition worth for two years of heavy fighting. Uh, some of those uh, BTRs that we got from Ukrainian army, um, we used as uh, donor uh, vehicles in order to repair uh, broken ones or uh, destroyed ones, uh, lightly destroyed ones, uh, due to the fact that we had a very experienced mechanics uh, which were able to put the vehicle back back into battle in pretty much no time.
kad smo zauzimali Izium, tamo su uh, bili Rusi sa novim beterima i razlika između tog novog ruskog betera i starih koje smo mi imali, to je kao da uporedite Mercedes i ne, neki mali auto, znači razlika je prosto ogromna. Nevertheless, I encounter the brand new BTR uh, on Izium front, uh, and uh, comparison is unbelievable due to the fact that the brand new BTR is just like Mercedes Benz, and the old BTR is some I don't know small dirty vehicle which barely like. crawl on the road. We should we should talk about that how we got to Izium. Can you walk me through the retreat or the regrouping or falling back from the Kiev front? How did that go? Where did you end up? How, please explain that. Do Izuma ćemo malo kasnije nego da li možeš da mi objasniš kako se desilo vaše povlačenje odnosno vaše odstupljenje od Kijeva? Gde si išao i kako je to se prošlo? Kad je slobođe veći deo Luganske republike, mi smo jednostavno dobili naređenje da treba da se povučemo. Prvo se povlačilo određene jedinice, a nas bataljon je bukvalno zadnji izašao sa te teritorije. Odstupali smo onako kako je položeno, deo po deo i u tom povlačenju Nismo skoro ništa izgubili ni od vojnika, ni od tehnike, međutim, bilo je dosta, na primjer, kamaza, ja sam po putu video i nekoliko tenkova koji su jednostavno stajali kraj puta, verovatno se ili motor pokvario ili nešto, uglavnom oni su postajali cijeli i mi smo se potrudili kad smo izlazili čisto da ih uništimo, znači zapalimo i ubacimo bombu da ne mogu da ih odremontiraju. A bilo je tehnike i ostalo po putu, da li od, verovatno od neispravnosti, jer na našem pravcu bilo je dosta stare tehnike. We had a pretty much orderly retreat. Uh, my battalion was uh, the last one, one of the last one that leave that area. And um, everything was orderly in according to the orders from our higher commands. Uh, due to the fact uh, when we reached our goal, uh, and our goal is, and I'm going to repeat it, to allow our troops in uh, Lugansk uh, People Republic to liberate as much as possible. And as soon as they uh, go above 60% of uh, liberation of territory, we start to withdraw. Nevertheless, I also would like to point out that uh, while we, we uh, while I was re uh, retreating back, we saw lots of uh, trucks, Kamaz, uh, the huge, uh, big one uh, trucks, and some tanks which were parked near the uh, near the road. Uh, looks like they had some technical difficulties and they were left uh, there. But we decided to destroy uh, much of it, especially the tanks. Uh, we destroyed all tanks, uh, regardless of the reason why it was left on uh, next to the road. Was it, mo was it mostly Donetsk People's Republic soldiers on this front, or were there a lot of Russian, more Russian regulars? Koga je tamo bilo više? Ljudi iz Donetska i Luganska ili ruske vojske? Na pravcu Kijeva. Ništa mi se čuo. Ruske. Jel se čujem? Sada čujem. Ruske vojske je bilo više. Uh, the Russian uh, military was predominant on Kiev. Uh... Okay, so now you're back in Belarus at this point. How do you end up back uh, in the fight? How long are you out of the fight? And then when, when and where do you go back in? 
A, ti si se nalaziš u Belorusiji, znači brat, ti si sa Kijeva, koliko dugo si ti ostao tamo da sediš, a, znači da se odmaraš pre nego što si krenio, da li u Lugansk, da li u Donetsk, da li možeš da nam to objasniš? Kako je Belorusija? Pa iz Kijeva kada si izlazio? Pa nisam ja bio u Belorusiji, mi smo došli u Rusiju. A, iz Kijeva si išao direktno u Rusiju ili kako? Direktno u Rusiju. Izašli smo u Rusiju, u Belgorodsku oblast, tamo i odatle odmorili smo nedelju dana i dalje krenuli na izđomski provac. Tako da nam se je, we did not retreat through uh, Belorusia, we retreat directly to Russia, to Belgorod's uh, region. And uh, we spent, a, we had a one week of rest before we went uh, back uh, into Lugansk People's Republic. When, so you're back in Luhansk now, did you end up in Izium? Kada se vrati u Lugansku Narodnu Republiku, ti se nešto na Izium ili tako? Ne, mi su. No, we uh, we had one week of the rest in Russia, in Belgorod region, and after that we go directly to attack Izium from Russian Federation. To vreme Ruska armija već zauzela ceo grad, a mi smo išli iz grada dalje. Naša jedinica je sa opredeljenim tamo jedinicama Ruske armije došla na 8 km od Slavanjska. I ja sam posle toga otišao u Dunjevsku. Um, Tako da je je da Izium city was liberated by the Russian military. Uh, my unit was thrown uh, in front of the US, uh, Izium and we advanced in direction of Slavyansk. Uh, we end up uh, somewhere in vicinity eight kilometers away from Slavians. And after that, I get uh, yet another uh, rotation. So they send me to, uh, back home to get some rest. Okay, one second. I have to one just pl- switch my uh, my computer power plug. If you give me one one quick second. Mora da promeni samo nešto na svom kompjuteru, da promeni utičnica, otvrđam. Bači se, daj malo kraće čoveče, pa ne mogu da zapamti šta sve govoriš. Laži. Jesi umorio? Sve će ja to narod čuješ? pozlatiti. Sve će to narod pozlatiti. Duša na stacije ide. Da. Okay, sorry if I showed my my butt too much there. So you were advancing you... south from Izium at that point, and then that's when you left the front. Uh, Moja jedinica je ostala tamo, a mene su zamolili da se vratim u Donetsku republiku i tamo sam radio sa rezervistima koji su mobilisani, pravio sam nove snajperske grupe, podučavao nove snajperiste i izvodio ih na prvu liniju fronta, dobio... Uh, so yes, I uh, I was um, well. My battalion uh, stayed there uh, on the position uh, approximately eight kilometers away from Slavyansk. I got an order to go back to Donetsk People's Republic due to the fact that uh, they open a new sniper school, uh, if you can call that. Uh, so I got a new um recruits uh, to work with and to train them how to uh, become a good snipers and of course i took them to some battles as well so then what are your thoughts on 
the retreat from Izium and the whole Kar- Kharkiv offensive that the Ukrainians did, how do you view that? Okay, uh, recimo onda kako je tvoje mišljenje o uh, čitavoj uh, toj ukrajinskoj ofanzivi na Harkovsku uh, oblast i na uzimanje Izjuma, kako ti na sve to gledaš? Vidi, uh, tamo je bilo dosta malo naših vojnika i lično, to je lično moje mišljenje, ne mora znači da je tako, uh, ja mislim da je ukrajinska razvedka veoma dobro odradila videla gde su nama jako slabe linije odbrane i oni su majstorski krenuli u napad malim brzim grupama i uspevali su da zauzimaju jako velike teritorije po mom ličnom mišljenju ekstra urađen posao well uh, let me be quite frank um... On Izium front, we did not have uh, enough uh, soldiers, and I have to admit that Ukrainian uh, did their job uh, excellent. Uh, they uh, did a proper recon uh, mission. They knew exactly where our position are, and they utilized a small, fast-moving groups and uh, they did that with the skill uh, i really do not have anything to add apart from they did professional job what do you think the russian military has learned from the kharkiv counteroffensive Šta ti misliš šta je ruska armija naučila iz uh, Harkovske ofanzive? Ja se nadam da su nešto naučili. Vidjet ćemo I hope, I hope they learn a lesson, but we will see. When was the last time you were at the front? Are you now training troops or have you been on the front lines recently? Kada si posljednji put bio na frontu? Da li ti sada uh, samo učiš uh, vojnike uh, odav, uh, ili sada se uh, odmaraš ili kada si zadnji, da, kada si zadnji put bio na frontu? Pre jedno dva deset dana otprilike bio sam ranjen. Na poziciju gdje smo mi bili doletela je granata, granata iz teške haubice, nekoliko vojnika je poginulo. Ja sam imao već osam kontuzije i sad svaka sljedeća kontuzija za mene je dosta pogubna. Od tog prileta otkazali su mi noge, jedno pola dana nisu radile, dva dana sam povraćao i mene su evakuisali u bolnicu. Tako da trenutno sada odmaram i lekari kažu da jedno dva meseca moram imati strogi odmor. Tako da trenutno nisam na frontu. Last time I was on the front line, that was 20 days ago, um, and I was wounded then uh, by the explosion of uh, heavy shell, artillery shell. Uh, it was, uh, pu- um, uh, my legs did not work at that time for two days. I couldn't even move my legs. Uh, I do have a problem with uh, my uh hearing and uh my head was hurting a lot and they evacuate me into russia and uh ever since i am uh, i was in the hospital for several days several weeks to be precise uh and they told me that i should uh recover for at least two more months before i will be able to return to our front did you have reason to believe that that was a NATO 155 round? A da li ti misliš da je to bio NATO 155 mm granata? Uh, ja sam često bio pod udarima ukrajinske artiljerije, međutim tako moćni udar još nikad nije bio. Tako da lako moguće da je NATO-ska granata zato što je realno bila jako, jako moćna. Well, I was under the Ukrainian artillery, not 
once and uh, I can vouch that I never ever experienced such explosion uh, prior to this one. Uh, so I do believe uh, it is uh, something very powerful, something that I did not encounter before. So therefore, I, uh, there is a great possibility that it was a NATO shell. I'd like to go back to the Isium front for a second before you left. Can you explain ja your... Se vratio, ja bi se vratio na Izumski front pre nego što krenemo dalje. Please you, carry on. Can you explain your day-to-day -day life? What was it like on the Isium front? Where were you sleeping? What were you eating? Can you walk me through just what it was like there? Da li možeš da mi opišeš kako je uh, bilo vaše uh, tvoje prebivanje na Izumskom frontu? Mm -hmm. Znači, gde si spavao, šta si jeo, uh, kako je, uh, uopšte, kako je tebi tamo bilo i uh, šta ste vi tamo sve radili? Pa radi specijalne jedinice, znači idu napred i čiste front. Čisto da bi imao bolje predstavu kako smo mi tamo ratovali, znači ja sam ispalio svega jedan kutac iz snajperske puške, sve ostalo je bilo iz puške koju koriste specijalne jedinice Ruske armije, to je puška s pregušivačem, zato što su uglavnom bile bliske borbe. To explain to you, um... I will try to, uh, oh my God, goodness me, sorry. Um, uh, during my time on Isium front, I fired only one shot from my sniper rifle. Uh, rest of it was uh, from a machine gun with silencer, with uh, suppressor, uh, specially designed for the special forces of Russia. Uh, the name of the uh, that uh, weapon is Vintores, uh, due to the fact that majority of the battles in on Izum front was very close combat. What was the frequency of the combat on the Izum front? Are you engaged daily? Is it weekly? Kaka je bila frekvencija rata na Izumskom frontu? Da li ste vi ratovali svakoga dana ili je to jedan put u toku nedelje ili koliko često se ulazi u sukobe, odnosno u borbe? 24 sata, 7 dana. 24-7, ću bi ono svičio. Tamo je bila jako silna grupacija ukrajinske armije, bilo je jako mnogo ukrajinske vojske i bilo je jako mnogo ukrajinske artiljerije. I taj deo fronta je specifičan po čemu? Tamo ima jako mnogo šuma, a šume su zapetljane kustarnicima, tako da je jako teško prolaziti, jako je komplikovano ratovati. I njihova artiljerija koja se nalazila na 300-400 metara od nas, minu bacačima jednostavno prebacivala, do naših pozicija i mi smo nekako sa bokovo ulazili, uništavali je specifičan teren, jako težak za ratovanje. Izium front is not an easiest place to wage a war, due to the fact that uh, terrain is very specific. There is heavy uh, woods over there, uh, which does not allow you to uh, walk freely. Uh, we were confronted with a huge group of Ukrainian soldiers and they had uh, excellent artillery support. Uh, predominantly, we had uh, problems with uh, Ukrainian mortars, which were located roughly three, maybe 400 away from our positions. So we always had to find a different way how to overcome it how to un, uh, outflank it, uh, or uh, somehow get from their rear. So it wasn't an easy, it was really hard battles. The situation changed in our benefit when we started to get small non-pilotes. So these are DJ Mini, so small, which we simply put it in the hands. We put it in the hands of it. Zeljkom i onda smo mogli da navodimo našu artiljeriju. Do tada je bilo jako jako komplikovano. At one point we start to get a small DJR mini drones 
and that helped us a lot. Uh, that pretty much saved a lot of lives due to the fact that we were able to um, release them out of our hands just to go ahead of uh, our position for, let's say, a couple hundred uh, meters. We can see is there any enemy uh, in those woodlands uh, and uh, it's make our life much more bearable. What was your greatest concern when you're on the front there? Koji je tvoje bilo najveći možda strah ili čega se se koncern može biti oko čega se se najviše brinio dok si bio tamo? Did you have an experience with their high Mars rockets? You have an experience facing them? Da li si kada pao pod Hajmare, da te Hajmar se dađao, da li imaš takvih nekih iskustava? Ja inače, za mene kažu da, kako kažu Rusi, nema čoveka koji se ne boji. Ako se ne bojiš ili lažeš ili si lud, ja sam verovatno lud, pošto se ne bojim, realno se ne bojim ničega. To be honest with you, I was not concerned about anything. Uh, the Russian used to say there is no person who is not scared. The only person who is not scared is either crazy or he doesn't know what else he talk about. But nevertheless, I really did not have any concerns uh, while I was there. Did you... Oni hajmersima tuku hotele, bolnice, banke, zgrade, pravite, sva prokuraturu. Ne znam, ne znam jedan slučaj da je hajmer doleteo na pozicije gde je vojska. To be quite honest, uh, I really do not know, not even a single um, event when the Ukrainians use hajmers against a military uh, fortification or uh, a mil uh, or against the soldiers. What, uh, what I do know, timers were used uh, to hit civilian buildings, to hit uh, governmental buildings inside of the cities or villages, uh, but uh, no, they do not, did not use timers against military uh, per se. Reports. Uh, I have to be also very honest, they definitely did destroy some uh, ammunition depots. Uh, I don't know, is it four or five? Uh, they were quite successful in uh, striking those depots with uh, HIMARS. But then again, as you do know, the ammunition depots are not moving targets. That's definitely not loads of uh, infantry or any other uh, military equipment nearby. Depot is a depot. Since you bring up shelling of civilian centers, of course, I have to mention there are the reports that I'm aware of, of the Russian military essentially flattening towns and cities and indiscriminate rocket fire. Kada se već počeo da pričaš o tome o civilnim napadima na civilne objekte, mi imamo dosta izveštaja gdje se govori da su Rusi potpuno srušili gradove, uništili sve civilne objekte, Šta ti misliš to? Vidje, kad se vodi rad, znači za neki grad, kad se neki grad oslobađa ili zauzima, svaki objekat gde se nalazi vojska više nije civilni objekat. I, na primer, čisto da bi vi mogli da uporedite, kada Ukrajinci kažu da je ruska armija visokotačnim raketama pogodila školu gde se nalazili civili, oni nikad ne pokazuju te civile koji su poginuli, zato što ih nema, tamo su poginuli vojnici. A sa naše strane, kada oni bombarduju civilne objekte, vi možete da vidite gomilu ubijenih civile. Poslednji put su pogodili u prodavnicu, poginulo je 16 ljudi u toj prodavnici i možete da vidite te civile. 
franzlika, pa ako hoćete da saznate istinu, onda jednostavno zađite na internet i pogledate. Ne postoje video snim. Ja ne kažem da naši nisu pogodili negde gde su bili civili. To je rat. Sasvim je normalno da ima žrtava civilnih. Međutim, možete uporediti tim što vidite na snimcima gde su realno civili ubijeni. Let me put it this way. There is two different usage of artillery. We have a long-range artillery shelling of the enemy lines and we have a storming of the city or any other settlement for that matter. When you are storming any city, village, or uh, then definitely uh, whenever you have um, resistance uh, from your enemy, uh, you will uh, start to take them, uh, you will try to take them out, even if that means that you are going to hit a civilian building. But when you are using artillery on long range, uh, there is a, hu a huge uh, distinction between how the Russian use long range uh, missiles or rockets or artillery and Ukrainians. Uh, you can find yourself on the internet uh, uh, what kind of uh, um, objects were hit by the Russian artillery and what kind of objects Ukrainian uh, managed to hit inside of uh, Donetsk People Republic or Lugansk People Republic. There is numerous uh, reports saying that Russians struck uh, schools full of civilians, but you will never see not even a single picture of a civilian uh, wounded or killed in those buildings, based on the fact that all those schools were uh, utilized by the Ukrainian army. Uh, in quite in stark contrast, you can see lots of videos that shows uh, Ukrainian artillery uh, shelling the uh, markets, shelling uh, shops. Uh, on the, the very uh, recently, they killed 16 people in a shop. Uh, so that is a huge difference how the yeah, Russian use artillery and how the Ukrainians use artillery. I think we could go back and forth with examples of. I'm sure you have stories, articles that show Ukrainians hitting civilians from your point of view. I could send you many articles of hospitals hit in Mariupol uh, by Russian artillery and other um, what people would see as war crimes. Um, but I think we could leave it at that, that I, I believe that Russia is indiscriminately bombing and it sounds like you believe that Ukraine is indiscriminately bombing. Možemo da idemo da razgovaramo tako napred nazad koliko god hoćemo. Sa tvoje strane, koliko ja vidim, ti smatraš da Ukrajinci su ti koji bombarduju civile i umištavaju civile. Na osnovu izveštaja koje sam ja vidio, recimo Mariupolska bolnica, gdje je Rusija gađala bolnicu i pogodila civile, koje ja smatram također da je to ratni zločin. No, međutim, daj da ostavimo to na tome. Ti vidiš da su Ukrajinci ti koji gađaju civile, a mi vidimo da Rusi to rade. Između mene i vas je što sam ja mnoge stvari video svojim očima, a vi vidite ono što vam u vestima pokažu. To je jako velika razlika. Let's leave it at that, but I just want to add. I saw those things with my own eyes. You saw that via the reports which are served to you. Može jedno pitanje. I do have one question for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Da. Na našim novostima Colin Powell je pokazivao Birku krenuli na Irak da bi zaustavili širenje u Iraku nuklearnog oružja. Da ste ga tamo našli? If I am not mistaken, Mr. Colin Powell used a flask with, my goodness me, and some uh, weapons of mass destruction. You went to Iraq, and my question is, did you find it? 
I'm, I would never claim that the invasion of Iraq was a right thing to do or a good thing. Um, I was actually surprised because when we went into Iraq, we flattened everything. We destroyed, we did bombing runs for weeks before we even tried to go in. So I was surprised that Russia didn't do that. Um, da ti iskreno kažem, ja nikada nisam ni verao da mi smo, da ulazimo u Irak i da uh, ratujemo sa Irakom uh, zbog uh, mogućih oružja masovnog uništenja. No, međutim, također hoću da kažem da nikada smo ušli u Irak, mi smo rušili sve nedeljama pre nego što smo uopšte ušli u neki grad. Znači, mi smo sve rušili bez razlike. Da, ne, ja sam hteo da kažem nešto drugo, da... Uglavnom ono što vesti pokazuju, što pokazuju na televiziji nije istina, to je čisto opravdanje. Naprimjer, Birka je bilo opravdanje da vi uđete u Irak, a to što vaše vesti sada govore tamo o navodnim zločinima, ja ne tvrdim da nije bilo nekih zločina sa naše strane, pošto sigurno je bilo toga, to je opravdanje da bi davali više novca, da bi davali više novca Ukrajini da ratuje s Rusijom. Well, my point was a uh, somewhat different. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, that was a precursor for invasion of Iraq. I mean, a false uh, pret uh, pretense that uh, Iraq had uh, weapons of mass destruction. And after that, uh, the media spin it in its own way, how it served them well. The same thing happens here in Ukraine. Uh, so they are trying to portray the Russia as a boogeyman, as uh, uh, bloodthirsty animals, uh, only uh, to achieve their own goals, such as send more money and send more armament to Ukraine. I think we're both vulnerable to the effects of propaganda, right? Where a lot of troops going into Iraq thought that there were weapons of mass destruction there, and then it turned out that that was a lie. I would posit to you that it's just as likely that you're under a lot of influence from Russia, and it could one day turn out that a lot of soldiers feel that they were lied to in the invasion in Ukraine. Ono što ja tebi želio bi da kažem, to je da svi smo mi podložni propagandi. Kao što e, naša vojska kada je krenula u Irak, velika većina je verovala da ide da se bori e, protiv e, i da e, uništi e, oružje za masovno uništenje. Kada su shvatili da su izlagani, naravno da im se to nije svidelo, a ja mislim da ćeš i ti e, kroz neko vreme shvatiti da je tebe tvoja ruska propaganda lagala i obmanjivala. Shvatio zašto sam ja došao u rat. Seti se na početku ovog razgovora kad sam ti rekao da sam video nacističke flage i krenuo da se borim. Znači ne može propaganda da bude ako ja zarobim ukrajinskog vojnika i na njemu istetoviran kukasti krst i na njemu istetovirana slika Hitlera. Ne može biti ruska propaganda kada mi nađemo naše vojnike kojima su iskopane oči ili kojima je odsečeno grlo i provučen jezik kroz grlo. To nije propaganda, mi smo to videli svojim očima. Znači, nacisti na Ukrajini postoje i vi možete to da vidite svojim očima ako želite da vidite. Naprimjer, Porošenko, prošli predsednik Ukrajine, njegov lični telohranitelji su nosili nacističke simbole na svojoj uniformi. Na današnji dan možete da vidite tenkove koji, koji nose kukaste krsteve na sebi i idu u rat. Znači, to nije propaganda, ja to vidim. Vi to možete da vidite ako želite da vidite. Um, uh, yes, uh, in regards to um, propaganda. Uh, please do remember... Uh, when we start our conversation, I told you that I saw by my own eyes the Nazi flags, the Nazi propaganda, the Nazi people, uh, well, people, people who are uh, having the Nazi uh, emblems on them. It's very hard to call the propaganda when we caught an uh, Ukrainian soldier who does have a swastika tattooed on him uh, to call that propaganda. 
Uh, it's very hard to call a propaganda when you come next to a bridge, find your fellow soldiers with eyes uh, removed. When you see that they slit his throat, they cut his tongue and uh, push it, shove it into that throat. It's uh, definitely not propaganda. It's something that I saw my own eyes. I saw uh, with my own eyes uh, lots of uh, units who are fighting under the Nazi flag uh, along with the Ukrainian flag. Well, we can, you can call that propaganda, but that is something that I saw by my own eyes. When I was in Iraq, we saw... We thought we were fighting against terrorists. I saw evidence that we were fighting against Islamic extremists there. But I think it was also just as likely that we were fighting against a lot of people there that wanted self-determination in their country. They wanted independence in their country in Iraq. They didn't want a United States soldier telling them what to do or even providing security for them. I think the people in Iraq, there were some terrorists there. Yes, there were some extremists there. But I think there were also a lot of people that wanted to make a living and wanted to be able to be in control of their own government, for better or for worse. Što se tiče Iraka, ja također mogu da kažem da su nama govorili da se mi borimo sa teroristima, da se mi borimo sa, islamin, sa islamistima. No, međutim, ja moram da kažem da je tamo i bilo terorista i bilo je islamista, ali tamo je bilo i običnog naroda koji nisu želeli našu zaštitu, koji su želeli svoje samoopredeljenje, koji su želeli sami da rukovode svojom stranom bez utjecaja bilo kakvog faktora sa strane. Da li to ispada da vi verujete da narod koji živi na tim teritorijama ima pravo na samoopredeljenje? Does that mean that you do believe that uh, people do have a right to make self-determination? Yeah, I do. That, uh, yeah, I think that that is the best case li, scenario. Možete li možda objasniti mm -hmm. što Amerika finansira uh, ukrajinsku armiju koja ubija ljude na Donbasu koji su izrazili želju da žive odeljeno od uh, takve države. Okay, can, you, can you explain to me uh, can you explain to me why the United States is financing the Ukrainian army who is killing a people who just want to uh, express their own right for self-determination that they do want to live in Russia and they do not want to live under the current regime. The argument is that the Ukrainian people want to be separate from Russia and that the Russian invasion is trying to take over their country. That's the argument from our point of view. Our argument is that the Ukrainians want to live independently and that the Russia is the one who is trying to make their own vision of the situation. I to je argument zbog kojeg mi pomažemo Ukrajini, odnosno pomažemo im da oni ostvare svoje samoopredeljenje. Tamo mnogo lažu. 2014. tu bilo je glasanje gde je glasalo oko 90% naroda da želi da se ocepi od Ukrajine. I šta više, oni nisu glasali da se prisjedine Rusiji, oni su glasali da žive odeljeno, da to budu odeljene republike, ni u sastavu Rusije, ni u sastavu Ukrajine. I don't know, are you aware that in 2014 there was a first referendum which were held in certain areas of Ukraine and people expressed this, their desire to live as a separate republic not under the uh, Ukrainian regime, but definitely not with Russia at that time. They want to be separate from Ukrainian regime, full stop. I think we... Second, yeah. Na primer, za razliku na Kosovu, tamo nikad nije bilo glasanje i NATO terorističko organizacija je bombardovala suverenu državu i narušila sva međunarodna prava. Tu državu Kosovo sada priznajete. To znači da je Amerika samo po sebi teroristička država. Ona je stvorila Bin Ladena 
stvorila je sve te vod sad financira naciste. Uh, in stark kontrast, for example, on Kosovo and Metohija, uh, NATO uh, as a terrorist organization attacked a sovereign uh, state of Serbia and they declared that Kosovo is independent and you rush to recognize it. In a uh, total is a stark contrast, you do not allow uh, people from Donbass to decide and to determine their own fate and future. I think if we get in the weeds about uh, what referendum is valid and which one's not, or what country is allowing other countries to be independent or not, we get into the weeds about that. I don't think this will be productive. Ne želim da zalazim u taka pitanja, pošto ne mislim da bi bila produktivna da govorim o tome koje države imaju pravo da osvaraju svoje referendume, a ko ne, da li je referendum legalan, da li je nije, da li je sproveden po pravilima, da li nije sproveden po pravilima. Nikaka produktivnost iz takvog razgovora neće se stvoriti. Because then we could start going back to the Soviet Union providing support to Vietnam against America fighting in Vietnam. We could we could keep going back and forth. Ja onda možemo recimo da se vratimo razno na Sovjetski savez kada je Sovjetski savez pomagao Vijetnamu da se bori protiv Amerike, a možda onda odemo na neko drugo ratište gdje je neko drugi pomakao nego mi. But I'm very curious about your personal experience as a soldier and I I really I want to hear more about your experiences as a as a soldier. Ono što mene najviše zanima, to je uh, tvoje iskustvo kao vojnika uh, i kako je tvoje viđenje situacije kao vojnika u uh, ovom ratu. Vidje, da bi uh, veliki problem uh, zapada, znači civila uopšte na zapadu, i u tome što sve gledaju tako kao što vi sada govorite. Vi gledate površno, uh, nećete da shvatite realnu situaciju i zbog čega neke stvari proishode. I to je osnovni problem zašto se dešavaju takve stvari kao što je rat na Ukrajini. There is a certain problem that we can see that really do exist in Western cultures. In our minds, you are just looking at the stuff as official from the outside of it. You never try to dig deeper to understand the root of the problem, uh, but root by itself uh, is there, and if you do not uh, remove the root of the problem, it will keep reappearing itself. So you believe the root of the problem is that NATO doesn't allow countries to have, have self-determination? If that's the argument, then I would say in a lot of times they don't and a lot of times russia doesn't and china doesn't the superpowers are not interested in smaller countries oh well, i mean i'm oh, sorry i'll start um ako ćemo da krenemo takom logikom onda možemo da kažemo da nato ne dozvoljava određenim zemljama da napravi samo opredeljenje a ujedno ja bih dodao i argument da i sovjetski savez nije dozvoljavao nekim državama samopredeljenje, Kina ne dozvoljava samopredeljenje. Znači možemo da kažemo da velike države, super sila, ne dozvoljavaju određenim teritorijama da imaju svoje samopredeljenje. There were oil interests in Iraq that the United States was needed to secure, wanted to secure. I think that's why they went there. I think there's a lot of similar economic interests for Russia in Ukraine. Uh, recimo, jedan od razloga koje ja mislim zbog čega je Amerika ušla u ratu Irak, to je da bi se obezbedila nafta za Sjedine američke države. Tako, također, ja mislim da Rusija ima nekih uh, drugih ekonomskih uh, ciljeva uh, u ovom ratu sa Ukrajinom. Verovatno da ima nekih ekonomskih ciljeva, međutim, Rusija je prosto ogromna država i Rusiju su ovaj rat uvukli. Znači, Rusija nije htjela rat, Vladimir Putin je već deseta godina nagovarao, ugovarao kako i Ukrajinu, tako i Zapad, 
da poštuju neka određena pravila i da rata neće biti. Kad je već Rusija saterana u Ćošak, morala je duđu rat. Što se tiče nafte, gasa, Rusija toga ima koliko hoće, tako da je to za ništa ne treba. You have to understand one thing, the Russia by itself have um, massive uh, lands uh, uh, square footage. Uh, so therefore, uh, Russia uh, by itself definitely does not need any additional piece of land uh, per se. Uh, but you, are, you might be right. Uh, it could be some sort of economical uh, reason behind the Russian intervention over there. But please do bear in mind that for the last 10 years, uh, President Vladimir uh, Putin uh, did warn West not to push with expansion of NATO to Russian borders. Uh, and if they just listen to him, there will be no war. But they disagree uh, and disre sorry, disregard all his pleadings uh, to stop with expansion. And therefore, the Russia was forced Po meni lično najveća korist Rusije u ovom ratu je u tome što je izašla na video, izašla je na površinu dosta velika korupcija koja je bila i u armiji i među političarima, izašle su na video poprilične greške u armiji koji su bile i to je, mešim da je to jedna korist Rusije u ovom ratu, znači država koja ima ogromnu teritoriju, njoj još teritorije tačno ne treba. Well, uh, I, do, I can speak about advantages uh, or some pluses that Russia did gain from this war. For example, the corruption in the military was uh, exposed, uh, some problems with uh, handling and financing of the military was also exposed. Uh, definitely it will uh, help Russia to uh, rebuild itself and to get rid of uh, corruption uh, in that sort of the sense. But uh, please do understand one thing, Russia uh, as a country definitely does not need any additional uh, land uh, due to the pure fact that uh, Russia is the biggest country land, uh, by the land mass in the world. Uh, so uh, that is definitely not a reason why the Russia enter into, into this conflict. Not land for the economic gain. Uh, and and you bring up a... The... Here, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 come on. Uh, please, please do. You bring up an interesting point that Russia was forced to invade. Ukraine would say... Ukraine that Russia was going to invade, and if they weren't a part of NATO pr to protect them from that, then they would be vulnerable to Russia. Mm, I'm sorry, I, do, I couldn't understand properly. Would you be so kind and just repeat? Sure. sure. Yeah. Ukraine's argument yeah. is that they wanted to be a part of NATO so that Russia wouldn't invade them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, jedan od razloga zbog čega je Ukrajina uh, i govorila zašto žele da postane članom nato uh, to je da bi se izbjegla mogućnost da bi ih Rusija uh, napala, odnosno uh, okupirala. I da li je Ukrajina to uspjela da uradi? 2008. predsjednik Putin je na međunarodnoj konferenciji jedno je rekao, dobro, razmislite, da li vi shvatate šta radite? Uh, so did Ukraine manage to uh, do that? Please do remember that in 2008, Mr. Putin said uh, quite openly and vocally in Munich, do you understand what you did? Uh, fact of the matter, fact of the matter is um, Russia was forced into this intervention. Da li ste vi nekad čitali, na primjer, Minske dogovore koji su bili potpisani? Did you ever read Minsk agreement that was uh, agreed between Russia, Ukraine, uh, under the Germany and France uh, supervised? I didn't read it, I'm familiar with it. 
But I fear that if we get too deep into the politics of it, that it's not going to be productive. Like you said, we're soldiers, and I feel like there's more to be gained from talking about your experience as a soldier. Ok, znači prvo što ti Chris uh, rekao, Chris kaže, znaš, uh, pošteno sa politikom, uh, to baš ti neće dobro da, da bude produktivno i neće baš da bude dobro, ipak smo mi vojnici i ja mislim da bi mogli uh, da govorimo više uh, što, toga što se tiče vojničkog, a ne političkog. I sada dolazi pitanje od uh, njegovog kolege koji kaže uh, koje uh, je linija ta koja Rusija želi da napravi. Da li je to uh, prisjedinjenje Donetska, Luganska ili, ili, ili možda neka druga linija uh, koju Rusija želi da ostvari, odnosno teritoriju da oslobodi uh, i kako ti misliš ko, uh, čime se to treba sve da završi? Uh. Da sam ja pitao za minske dogovore. Znači ja kao vojnik sam bio jako razočaran kao i većina građan Donetske i Luganske republike zato što je sa potpisivanjem minskih dogovora Ukrajincima data mogućnost da im se vrati sva teritorija Donetske i Luganske oblasti. Jedino što je trebalo to je da pristanu da ne budu u NATO. Well, uh, the reason why I ask you in regards to Minsk uh, agreements is because that I, as a soldier, was quite disappointed by the wording of Minsk agreement uh, due to the fact that all those regions supposed to uh, become uh, part of Ukraine again uh, and that uh, <clears throat> Ukraine is going to uh, maintain the full uh, sovereignty over the Donetsk and Lugansk uh, region as, uh, as a whole. A što se tuče granica, ja lično, lično moje mišljenje, znači Rusija je rekla da će ići na potpunu denacifikaciju, to znači da treba da se uništi u potpunost ukrajinska armija. Mi sada vidimo da znači, ne postoji granica na kojoj bi mogao biti mir. Znači dok se potpunosti ne, ne zauzme pričom, to je znači moje mišljenje, dok se potpunosti ne zauzme cela Ukrajina i uništi se u potpunosti njihova armija, tamo mira neće biti. Znači, tu nije dovoljno Donetska i Luganska oblast. Zašto mislim da je to tako? Zato što gde su sada granice, Ukrajina dobija sa zapada sve više i više oružja i ako je ranije Rusija planirala da se oslobodi Donetska i Luganska oblast, sada shvataju da će morati da se zauzme cela Ukrajina. Jer gde god je granica sa povećanjem količine oružja, sve će teže biti zaustaviti. Well, let me try to address your question. In my mind, and I reiterate in my mind, uh, there is no line where we are going to stop. Uh, due to the fact that one of the goals of this special military operation was denazification and demilitarization of Ukraine. There is no certain line where we can say that uh, if we get uh, to that line, uh, there will be no more danger either for uh, Donetsk, Lugansk or other regions or for Russia itself. So we have to go all the way and dismantle this Nazi regime. Yeah? Uh, pitanje je za tebe, znači kako ti misliš kako će se to završiti? Da li ti misliš da će Rusija da okupira kompletnu Ukrajinu? 
mislim da će Rusija da oslobodi celu Ukrajinu. Well, I believe that Russia is going to liberate the whole Ukraine. Yeah, I think the uh, the likelihood that you and I were a part of justified invasions are very unlikely. When you look at the history of war, I think it's probably more likely that we were it was a part of economic concerns. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, would you be so uh, kind and just repeat because I really didn't catch your words. So I'd like to kind of gear towards the end here and, and ask about the, the... You'd said earlier that you had engaged with American snipers. Did you have evidence that you that you fought against American snipers? Uh, this, uh, I recall the C B O uh, the C Ratova sa American sniper in. Dali imaš bilo kakav dokaz da si ti ratovao sa American sniper in? Sniperistima. Da, bio sam uzeo opredeljena sredstva njihova koja su bila tamo neka dokumenta od Amerikanaca, od Finaca, od Nemaca i to je bilo predano mojem komandiru. Za Amerikance ne znam ništa, mi nisu rekli konkretno ko su i šta su, za Fince su rekli da su to bili dosta bogati ljudi, verovatno su dolazili tamo na safari. Uzeo sam bio neku stvar koju ja nisam znao da koristim, znači to je bilo ovako nešto četvrtasto i kad su Rusi videli da to je jednostavno stajalo kod mene na prozoru, kad su videli u jednom od mojih intervjua da to stoji, rekli su da će doći da preuzmu i da mi daju šta god ja hoću. Prosio sam dva teplovizora za to, došli su uzeli, a teplovizore tako nisam ni dobio. Well, uh, thanks to the matter in regards to that American sniper group that uh, he was referring to. Uh, yes, I did uh, collect some documents out of those uh, people that we managed to take out. Uh, some of them had American documents uh, on themselves, some of them had the Finnish uh, from Finland, uh, some of them were Germans. I do not know what is the background of American uh, citizens. Uh, I do know that Finnish people were quite wealthy, at least those are the information that I received. So it looks like that they arrived on safari. Uh, I also took some equipment from uh, them, uh, including one box. Well, it looked like a box, and I really didn't know what that uh, is. And uh, while I was giving uh, an interview uh, over the YouTube, I do believe, uh, they saw it and they came to pick it up from me. Uh, they promised to give me two thermal region scopes, but I never received anything back. And they were quite excited to get that box off me. I mean, that uh, device, which is look like a box, sorry. How do you feel the mobilization is going to change things for the war? Kako misliš, kako će mobilizacija promijeniti tog rata? Uh, moje, moje, ja sad pričam, to je moje lično mišljenje, da je mobilizacija, to je više, uh, više tako uh, Rusija hoće više da pokaže koliko je ozbiljna. Uh, Rusija ima sasvim dovoljno vojnika da nema potrebe da mobiliše ljude. Uh, međutim, uh, ja mislim, mislim da je to, a, daj, pre, prevedi pa ću dalje. Uh, in my mind, the Russia does, definitely does not have any need to uh, uh, go with a mobilization uh, due to the fact that Russia de definitely does have uh, more than enough uh, military uh, conscripts, uh, mm, not conscripts, sorry, um, um, soldiers who are under the contract. Uh, but then again, I do believe that Russia just wants to show their seriousness. 
that they um, uh, resol uh, resolute to resolve this problem once for all. Ljudi u Rusiji su bili mnogo ljuti zato što mi vodimo specijalnu vojnu operaciju, a Ukrajina i ceo NATO pakt u stvari ratuje protiv Rusije. Znači nije nikakva tajna da se koriste sateliti, svi mogući sateliti i Amerike i Engleske i svih. I narod jednostavno u Rusiji je već počeo da se buni, tražili su da se pokrene ta mobilizacija. Naravno ima onih koji begaju. The fact of the matter is, uh, the Russian population were sick and tired watching on the situation that develops in Ukraine, that we are uh, having the special military operation uh, and against us is the Ukraine and the whole NATO. All satellites from the NATO countries are working for Ukraine's, Ukraine. <clears throat> uh, all military machinery from the NATO is working for Ukraine and we are just playing special military operation. Uh, so the population itself demanded to go with mobilization. I sada, na primjer, ima mnogo više dobrovoljaca koji se javljaju da idu u rat nego što je potrebno po tom prizivu sa mobilizacije. Jednostavno, ta mobilizacija je bila potrebna da se, da se društvo svo mobiliše, znači ne, ne, ne samo da bi oni išli u rat za rat, ja kako i dalje tvrdim, znači siguran sam da Rusija ima a, sasvim dovoljno vojnika, ali to će više da promeni situaciju unutar Rusije a, same, znači da se više ljudi da se objedine. Ako pogledate neke videomaterijale, vidjet ćete kako a, majke i žene i drugi ispraćaju ljude sa pesmom. Chetil Mase is you have to understand that there is a much more volunteers who are trying to draft themselves uh, into the Russian army than whatever the currently Russian government uh, called upon mobilization. You have to pay attention to the small things, for example, how uh, people are um, uh, saying farewell to the people who are mobilized right now. They are doing that with the dignity, with the joy, with uh, with a laugh, well, uh, with a smile on their faces, because they do know they are fighting for the just cause. There's... Treba da shvatite da je Rusija izgubila u drugom svetskom ratu 26 miliona ljudi. I svako pojavljivanje nacizma za ruskog čoveka, to je uh, jako velika uh, beda. I Rusi jednostavno hoće da se bori od toga celim svojim narodom, celim svojim bićem. Koliko god vi ne hteli da priznate, međutim na Ukrajini cveta nacizam, tamo su narodni heroji, ljudi koji su osuđeni u nimbeškom procesu, oni dokazani su fašisti, to su trenutno narodni heroji Ukrajine. Um, you have to understand that Russia or Soviet Union lost 22 million uh, people uh, due to the Nazi Germany, due to the, uh, the Nazism by itself. And then again, uh, the Nazism is right now flourishing in Ukraine. Uh, right now, the national heroes are the Nazi collaborants, are people who were even judged in Nür Nuremberg uh, um, court uh, after the Second World War. And what can you, uh, and how can you explain to the ordinary Russian that uh, we have to live and lead by the Nazi to uh, get stronger by uh, uh, every day. And uh, for us it's definitely not understandable that you are supporting, when we say you, uh, your governments are supporting the Nazism. Civilizacija je više želja naroda da se krene u zbiljni rat nego što realno nešto može da promeni na bojnom polju. Realno može da promeni na bojnom polju to što je sada, što su četiri republike odeljene provele ponovo referendum i što će verovatno sutra ili preko sutra da uđu u sastav Rusije. To je ono što će da promeni nešto u ovom ratu, a mobilizacija ništa posebno neće promeniti. Mobilization per se will definitely not change that much. What will change the situation on the ground is... After the results of this referendum in uh, 
Donetsk, Lugansk, Kherson, and Zaporozh region, uh, when they become part of the Russia, then definitely it will be a game changer. Because yeah. from that point on, the Russia is going to fight for their own territory, which means the whole might of the Russian army are going to be used, not just like uh, right now as a special operation. I have a couple of questions about the combat that you've experienced. What was the average range of engagement? Ima nekoliko pitanja za tebe kao za vojnika. Reci mi koliko je bilo prosječna udaljenost između tebe i neprijatelja. Od pola metra do 1600 metara da je bio najdalji vistrep. Well, um, I had a um, uh, very close combat, which is uh, half meter away from each other, and my uh, longest shot was on 1,000 1, meters away. 1,600 meters, now we know you're lying about everything. <laughs> 1600 metara, sada znam da ti lažeš u svemu. Dođite na poligon u Rusiju i ja ću vam pokazati kako se puca na 1600 metara. Well, you are welcome to come to Russia and I will show you how you can shoot on 1600 meters. And what type of combat, is it mostly trench warfare or... What is the what would you say the type of combat is mostly? Što možeš da kažeš kakva je vrsta rata? Da li to tamo da li je rat rovski ili je neka druga vrsta rata? Da li je rat rovski rovski rat ili je neka druga vrsta rata? Posle 2015. znači kad je oslobođeno Debajcevo, to je bio rovski rat. A sad više nije, sad je to rat, uglavnom tehnologije, artiljerije i bespilotnih aparata. After 2016, it was a pure trench war, and right now we have a very fluid warfare and technology warfare as well. Artillery is predominantly used as... Uh, weapon of choice. Andrew, did you have any other questions that you wanted to ask or think we missed? Pitanje za tebe je, znači, kako ti štitiš svoju familiju, šta oni misle o tome što ti učestvuješ u ratu i kako uopšte se brineš u svojoj familiji? Ja živim u opredeljenom mestu koje je dosta zaštićeno, to je prvo, a što se tiče Familije, već sam rekao da ja ovdje imam privatnu firmu, dok sam ja bio u ratu, žena je radila i dobar bilo tog novca i je odlazio na pomoć Donijetskoj republici. Ja imam tamo jedan deči dom o kome se brinem koji finansiram od 2014. godine i moja žena na primjer radi ovdje i sa tim novcem mi pomažemo i ranjene borce. Znači ja sam čovjek koji je dovoljno dovoljno zarađuje da može da živi spokojno i da pomaže drugi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. The fact of the matter is I lived in Russia and my neighborhood is quite safe, so therefore I do not have any problem in regards to security of my family. Uh, in relation to how do I support my family, well, I believe I told you that I do have my own company. It's, um, we can call that a meat processing uh, um, company. Of course, I do have my small farm and I'm using that as uh, 
raw material to create um, uh, meat for the uh, reselling. And my wife uh, just continued that work. And that is, the re uh, that is the way how we finance ourselves. Nevertheless, I also have an, uh, one orphanage, which is under the, my wing, and I am doing my best in order to keep them fed and clothed and to provide them the roof over their heads. So I think that was all the questions I had. I do want to say we obviously completely disagree. The point of this conversation wasn't for it to be a debate. This is not to give a platform to Russia to speak propaganda. The point of this conversation is to, I think, open communication and understanding the people that you disagree with is the best thing to do. I think if we shut down lines of communication, it will not be of benefit and we'll all be in the dark about each other and it will just continue to misunderstand each other even more. So that was the point of this discussion today. We don't, Andrew and I, we don't agree with what uh, Dijon thinks, but we want to understand better, I think. And so... Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Tak, my oba nie bio pokušaj da damo mogućnost za rusku propagandu. Ovo je bio samo pokušaj da pokušavamo da razgovaramo sa čovekom sa Dejanom, bez obzira koliko god se mi ne slažemo. Želili smo da čujemo i vašu stranu, zato što ako ljudi razgovaraju, tada će se bolje razumeti. Ako ne razgovaraju, tada će doći do više ne suglasica i ne nerazumevanja. And if I Hvala vam puno za to što ste učestvovali. And if I ever see you, I'll be sure to stay 2000 meters away. Hvala vam. I ako te kad bude i ako te kad bude videli, potrudite se da bude barem 2000 metara do vas. Ček ček, ja nisam čuo, izvini. Kažem ja rekao je ako te budem video ja ću se potruditi da budem barem 2000 metara od tebe. Jer ako gađaš na 1600 da ga ne pogodiš po drugu. A mi inače je jako dobar čovjek. Breaking up a little. Ništa nisam čuo. To je bio... Ništa nisam čuo. Jedan vjetar ili to je bila puška. Is it breaking up for you too? Yes. Wait, hold on, Dijon. Let's get it. Dejan, ništa nisam čuo. Ništa nisam čuo. Puška, Ljoša, ništa se ne čuje. Ne, 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 kako si počeo da diraš, tako ne radi. Ne čuješ sad? Sad ti čujem. We didn't hear any of that. Just you want to try that again? Halo. Halo. Da li se čujem? Jel me čuješ? Jel me sad me čuješ? Sad ti čuješ? Me čuješ sad? Da. Jel me čuješ sad? Da. A sad? Da. Sad čuješ? A. Jel me čuješ? Dene, jako loše te čuješ. Vidi, puška firme... Kalibar 408, inače sa tom puškom je svetski rekord, pogođeno je na 1500. Dene, prekidaš. I do believe that he was trying to give you some information in regards to that rifle that he used to shoot on... 1,600 meters, but unfortunately I couldn't catch uh, all details and I do uh, heard that he mentioned some sort of the world record, and but there is lots of in-between that I couldn't hear.
Yeah, it was breaking up there. Um Kad se vidimo, pićemo kafu. Uh, well, uh, right now, lads, you just uh, get an invitation to have a, uh, to grab a cup of coffee together. Absolutely. Oh, Starbucks. Get some Starbucks. <laughs> Chef's kiss. <laughs> um, Thank you very much for your time, Dijon. Does he does he have anything closing thing that he wants to say? If I uh Dana Kwalati Puno, uh Dali Mosh Dimash Nash the Kajas Zavrsheta Pogo Grasgora. Ja se nadam da kod vas neće biti taj građanski rat, o kome smo pričali i da ću jednog dana moći da dođem u Ameriku, zato što mi je jako velika želja videti svojim očima Nijagarine vodopade i Kanjom Kolorado. To su za mene takve, to, to mi je želja u životu da vidim u Americi. To be quite honest, I really do hope that there will be no civil war in the United States, regardless of whatever is spreading all over the news. Uh, and also, I would like to say that I will be more than glad to come to United States in the uh, uh, future, due to the fact that I would love to see Niagara, Niagara Falls and Colorado uh, River. I always wanted to see Moscow one day, but it seems like that might not ever be a possibility. But hopefully, hopefully there is peace very soon, and hopefully... We can go back to the way things were before. Ja, ja također sam želio da dođem i da vidim Moskvu, no nažalost sada je to sve dalje i dalje. Uh, ali ajde da se nadamo da će biti mira i da će se sve vratiti kao što je nekada bilo. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you Zoran for the great translating. We really appreciate it. Oh, you are more than welcome, lad. Uh, have a nice day. Take care. Bye. Bye. Here. Uh, Andrew, let's stay on. How do we move them? Okay. Let's see. Uh... How do I move Fogel to, to general? Is there, could you do that? Or is, I guess I have to do that. I'll just I'll pick him if that's okay. Yeah, no hard feelings. There we go. Yeah, so that was uh that was interesting to hear what a lot of what he said made no sense. I felt like 